Oh, we're live. Awesome. Welcome, everybody, to Xbox 2 Plus 1, our, uh, you know, guest show. Uh, we have an amazing guest that we've wanted to have on for a long time, and we figured what better what better time to uh, have someone on to talk about, like, the aftermath of the Game Awards. So, hi, I'm one of your hosts, Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, and we have uh, Mr. I Only Played Xbox for five hours this year. <laughs> Jez Corden from Windows Central. He's here as well. Pink Only played slam, two man. games, uh, five hours. And you can tell, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, everything I've ever said about Jez has come true, and Xbox has proved it. What's going on, Jez? Absolute, pure, unadulterated slander from Xbox. And I'm going to I'm gonna complain. In fact, this is the Xbox tax right here. Someone, it is. someone is undermining you're, you're, me to undermine. You're paying the tax. I'm paying the tax. I mean, considering it. considering you play uh, Xbox games during the show every single week, and we podcast for four hours, <laughs> you figure your time would be a little bit longer than only five hours. Yeah, but like still. even the true achievements one isn't accurate. Like I was like, wait, I'm sure I played Diablo more than that, and then you know, then I realized, well, half of it's on PlayStation, um, on PC. Sorry. And, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But it's just a bit of fun, isn't it? But I don't know what the hell is going on with my Xbox official stats because it says that I got 6,000 game score in five hours, which I'm pretty sure is impossible, even for a pro speedrunner. But... No, that's not. That's that's easily done. Easily. Really? I, in five hours, I could probably get like 150,000, 100,000. Oh, okay. Well, we're not all... Either way, crazy uh, dudes like you. But let's yeah. introduce our illustrious. We we, we guest. do have an incredible guest this week. We have the one and only Gene Park. What's going on, Gene? Thanks for for joining us. Hey hey, how's it going, uh, Jez? If you don't, if you if you're really not enjoying your experience on Xbox right mm. now, I do have I do have a link I can send you. Oh, uh, that could be useful. Oh, uh, it's a. It's a article uh uh from this uh organization called ign <laughs> it's titled how to cancel your xbox game Pass." <laughs> i think it might be useful useful for you jez very useful jez since you ain't using it since you ain't playing any games yeah you might need ign's step-by-step -step guide about how to cancel xbox game pass that's uh, right man like for the, for those who are listening and might not be aware, there's there's a little bit of drama with IGN and Game Pass right now, which we'll probably talk about in a minute. But exactly, a little, yeah. a little preview for the show. A little so. preview, yeah. Gene, give us give us a, give us some of your history, and I know I know it's like one of one of the things is uh, about yourself is that you've got all these great stories from a very <laughs> illustrious kind of career. So like when I say mm -hmm. give us your backstory. I, it, it, I feel like it could go on for hours, but is there is there an abridged version for people who might not be aware of you are? Although I'm pretty sure everyone here knows exactly who Gene Park is. No, no, I think a lot of people don't know like my history. You know, one of the most common things, uh, even the Sega CEO told me, Gene, you've been in the industry for a long time, and I didn't correct him, <laughs> but I, I have not been in the industry for a long time. I've only been uh, in the games media industry since 2019, covering uh, games from the Washington Post when we started our our uh, fledgling little games coverage uh, uh, section in the Washington Post uh, that recently closed down in January at the beginning of this year. I remember that. <laughs> so now I remain the Washington Post only video game section. I was the only person that did not get laid off from that whole thing. Um, Bit but sweet before. <laughs> Yeah, but before that, uh, well, I'm originally from, the bridge version is that I'm originally from Guam. Uh, I'm Korean, but I was born in the, the small, tiny Pacific island of Guam. Um, studied journalism, uh, wrote a, wrote a little bit of games criticism for a small uh, game game site, GameCritics.com, uh, during college, from 1999 to 2003. 
But after that, I became a regular uh, news newspaper journalist. Um, I've interned at the Orange County Register and San Gabriel Valley Tribune in California. And I went back to Guam to work at a paper there. I moved to Hawaii in 2006 to work at the, the, the paper, uh, the, one of the two papers there. And eventually there was only one. Um, but I was a crime reporter, co cops and courts reporter, public safety reporter, and I became a transportation reporter. Also covered education, military, and uh, small business. Um, and uh, towards the end of my Hawaii run, um, I asked to move to become more of an online producer because I really wanted to. I got laid off in the middle of, in the middle of my career, and part of that was and. Part of the inspiration for me wanting to switch focuses in journalism was because of was inspired by that. I was like, I can't just be a writer, I can't just be a reporter. That's such a limited skill set, you know. I I, I need to be more. Uh, I need to diversify my skill set. So if I get laid off again, or 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 I can never be laid off ever because I'm too useful. But if I get laid off again, I can always easily navigate somewhere else. So I started doing online production and social media stuff. I was actually the first social media reporter in Hawaii, and I became the first social media editor and community manager in, in, in the state of Hawaii. Uh, That's for awesome. a For uh, initially the, uh, the, the main paper, um, <clears throat> and then I did public relations for a little bit for about a year. And then I got pulled back into journalism by a small startup uh, that's actually owned by the eBay founder, PR Midiar. Uh, so I went, uh, he was my first billionaire uh, boss. And so I okay. did social media for that small website called silverbee.org. It's a nonprofit website. And I was able to increase traffic for that site by 524%. Hmm. Um, and I, I started new revenue sources, including like events and events business. Um, and then I stayed there for about a year and a half. And th that was the work that caught the attention of the Washington Post. And then when I applied to the Washington Post, um, one, I didn't get the job at first. Uh, so, I, so I applied again to a different job. And then I got that one, and I became a social media editor at the Washington Post in 2015. That's um, awesome. And yeah. part of that is I was part of the audience team. So by being in the audience team, you are advising other reporters and sections and editors about how to reach a better audience. And around 2018, 2019, the Washington Post was exploring a, a, an esports section um, because there's a lot of local investments into esports uh here in washington dc by a lot of uh, billionaires here as, as well too but um i advised them don't cover only esports that's such a niche topic uh the, the information uh <clears throat> economy for esports is very very crowded uh esports teams have their own news organizations that they got they, they cover their own news so you know unless we're only going to be covering like investigative news on on esports organizations it's not worth it we should cover video games in general um, and they agreed. And then after that, they were like, well, you know, we're going to start a video game section. We should hire a reporter. Well, I guess we should hire Gene <laughs> because he, he's, already, he's already here. Uh, it's not as easy as that uh, to prove myself to the editors at the Washington Post that I can write. And although they did hire me for my social media chops, uh, and they did know that, I was, that I've been a writer for the most part, uh, for most of my career, uh, they did want to kind of test me. To see how I can be edited, how 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 quickly and well I can I can move copy, and whether my uh, stories will gain traffic. I mean, it's 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 a multi-layer test um, that's going on. I mean, um, you broke I some news this that. morning, right? I did, yeah. I, did, I did, broke some news this morning too. So, you know, so I was able to to kind of prove all that out, and they're like, "Oh yeah, Gene can totally write." Um, he and that, that's a huge compliment. It's a, it's a huge bar to meet. Uh, when the editors feel that the, that you are uh, eligible to write for the Washington Post, I have a lot of friends who are really, really good reporters, much better reporters than I am, much, much better. I'm not a great reporter. Um, like, like this is like Jason Schreier levels of of reporting, right? Um, really good investigative stuff, but they weren't good writers, and they were like, "This is good stuff. He's really doing a good, good public service." These are friends that I tried to get to work at the Washington Post. They're like, "This is good stuff. He's a really great, excellent reporter." can see why he won a little awards we can't hire him because the writing isn't up to stuff and it's like we need to have good writing too um so that's been that that was really tough to pass but that's what happened that's uh, here i am and t today i broke some news even too um, what was so i missed that uh what was the news you broke today mm -hmm. i must i must have missed it yeah yeah it's uh Pretty finally officially the, the closure of e3 uh, oh no not the closure yeah. of e3 e3 yeah. officially <laughs> dead forever 
Mm. That's forever. It's just gone. It's just, it's just like the the E3 experiment is now over. Damn. I mean, I guess I'm happy. I'm happy I got to go to E3 once when it was still E3. I went to E3 2016. Nice, nice. Uh, I was invited by Xbox to hit a million. I, I hit a million gamer score on the Inside Xbox show with Phil. And they invited me to it. And that was before they opened it up to the public. So I think it was like the last one before they mm. opened it up. Mm. So I, I, at least I got to live the dream one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. that, was, that was a lot of fun. But E3, hey, it's okay. We got Keeley. It's all right. We got, <laughs> summer, we got Summer Games Fest and Winter Games Fest. So we're good. Yeah, maybe. I think E3 was like... It was, it was special, you know. I, I used to watch E3 when I was younger and thinking like... Oh man, it's, I'd love to go, but it's so far away, and like I'd never get to go. And I'm, it's it's a privilege that I actually did end up getting to go a few times. Which one? Which one did you go to? Oh, uh, I, I can't remember the years off the top of my head. I went to 2016, 17, 18, mm. or maybe nineteen. The, the one very last before, one. The one before COVID. Yeah, I went to the last one. That was with um. Yeah, if it was the one before COVID. Yeah, that's the last in person one. Yeah, with uh, oh, what's his name? The famous guy, Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. The last that was, one, right? That, 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 yeah, that, that E three did go out in a out in a bang. That was kind of the most memorable moment, or one of the most memorable moments ever. Um, yeah, this kind of cyberpunk, it, and that was during the Xbox show. You know, during the Xbox yes. show. Yeah. Crazy. We crazy have a games. big Afroman fourteen in the chat says, "Gene, we love your career and accomplishments, but we got to hear the background of you being a beauty pageant judge. Don't skimp out on us." Oh yeah, y'all want to y'all want to hear that story? Yeah, I want to <laughs> hear the story. <laughs> Sure, sure, yeah. So, uh, I, uh, well, I dated within the beauty pageant like circle. Um, Whoa, okay, okay. Damn, dating the models. And so, uh, my, you know, I was dating like Miss Chinatown and like, you know, like the, the beauty pageants, there, there are different versions of beauty pageants and there's like the Miss America one and that's kind of the most, the, the most mainstream one, at least in the U.S., Miss America, and then there's like Miss 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 US or whatever, and Miss World. Um, but then all of these different pageants will have like local chapters or whatever. So there's like Miss Honolulu or Miss Miss Chinatown or whatever. Uh, so I was actually dating uh, Ms. Waikiki. There is a division of uh, of uh, beauty pageants for older women, and by older I mean they're older than 25 years old. Uh, so she was my age. We were both about like 35 or 36, and so I was dating Ms. Waikiki. And she was a fashion designer, and so I was really, really into like the fashion world uh, and and the, be- the the beauty world and modeling world. And uh, I was also a reporter in Hawaii, and I was also uh, uh, because of my my uh, my presence on social media at the time, I was one of the more well known uh, 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 media personalities in Hawaii. So the judges of the Miss America pageants uh, were like. Or the organizers were like, "Hey, you know, Gene, you're a you're a, you're a man about town. Um, you know, you could be a draw as a judge. So why don't we uh, enlist you as a judge for some of our pageants?" And I was like, "I would love to judge some bitches zero out of ten. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, 10 out of 10. Oh, uh, no. that was that was exactly my words. Actually, I was like, I would love to judge some bitches. So oh, sign wow. me up. Um, Intriguing. And." Uh, the, the organizers were gay, so like I'm like like but like, that's the context. Like I'm not like talking to another bro, like yeah, some bitches or whatever like that. That's that the 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 context is that I was talking to another bitch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about about all these bitches. So yeah, so I just got signed up, and uh, you know there is a conflict of interest uh, uh, code within within that thing. I can't date anybody that I'm judging, <laughs> definitely. So, you know, like a lot of like Miss Hawaii uh, pageants where I was, uh, you know, disqualified for because I eventually like ended up dating Miss Honolulu. Um, But uh, yeah, that's how I got involved. Uh, So, you know, there would be the the, the, the swimsuit pageant, the evening gown pageant and the talent pageant or, or, or the talent portion. And then also like when they answer questions and these girls weren't dumb. This is not like, it's weird that Miss America would, would, would elevate like the dumbest girls <laughs> because like at the local level, these girls aren't dumb. They're very smart. Um, and some of them would even like end up running for public office. And it's a very natural fit, uh, the, the, the beauty pageant to, to, to local senator uh, uh, pipeline. High charisma uh, stats. Just, 
yeah, charis- exactly. Charisma, public speaking, all that stuff uh, uh, really helps. And I was actually... Uh, how I was able to train uh, during the interview process for the Washington Post. Uh, I've talked about this before, but I'm sure a lot of people don't know, but in the Washington Post, the interview process is very, very strict. It's several months long. It it took me about three months to get hired, but it was also a process that involved 15 interviews with 15 (laughs) editors. Oh, my God. I mean, this, was top, wow. this was on top of like writing like a whole me- memo of like you know my strategy and my plans or whatever uh, 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 like uh, like what i would do at the post or whatever this is after all that and then the final gauntlet uh to to, to pass and get the job is this gauntlet of 15 interviews including the executive editor which was marty baron at the time who is if you don't know what was the main character of spotlight the best picture winner of whatever uh whatever but it was about uh, the investigative journalism into the Catholic ch- the Church's abuse of, of boys, basically. Oh, damn. Um, so big story and big editor. And uh, so, yeah, I had to interview 15 different people. Uh, and these the, these are all folks, uh, again, in Washington, D.C. and New York. And I don't have a lot of experience talking to folks on the East Coast um, or even having a, a job interview of that kind of stature. So I asked my beauty pageant friends. I was like, hey, help me out in terms of, you know, getting those charisma points, you know, I need, I needed to, to do that. So it was really fun where I just had a bunch of girls like sit around me and I would just talk about my job and they would like critique me on, on like, you know, my presentation or my speaking pattern or like my confidence level and, and how I carried myself. It was really helpful. And I've, I, I, I do absolutely believe that it was a huge reason why I got the job. Um, because, you know, and all, all of these interviews were through Zoom. They're usually in, in person, but it, I was living in Hawaii and that was just simply too far for the Washington Post for me to, to, to fly me out. So that's, I did all these interviews in Zoom in 2015. So, um, so, so but yeah, I, that's, I, my beauty pageant, <clears throat> that's my beauty pageant background. I, I had it in my head that you'd been at Washington Post for longer than that for some reason. No, it's just the past eight, eight years, eight years. Yeah. It's, eight years is a long time. It's, uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's just coming up to nine years next year. True. Um, so that's a long time. It's the longest place I've ever just worked in, you know, because I, I was moving jobs quite a bit in my late 20s, early 30s. But this one I've settled it into. And hopefully will be for a while. Uh, I, I think I speak for everyone that, you know, you do a pretty damn excellent job. And I think a lot of guys like myself who who try to be writers you're one of the guys that people generally look up to i would think um you're a writer you're a writer if you're writing then you're a writer so uh, yeah for that's, sure that's Jez consider himself a blogger though yeah mm. I, I, Jez, yeah. Jez is a blogger i'm a blogger, I'm a blogger. yeah I'm, I'm envious of that and we used to blog regularly at the washington post but i feel like we we we, we, we scaled that back and and that, this is before I became a writer, and it's, I'm, I'm I'm envious of being because there's so many thoughts that I would rather blog out, but I don't really have a platform for that uh, because I need to like I have it has to be a whole discussion and meetings and everything like that, so it's just tough. So it's a I suppose it's a very it's a very different arena because see this 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 is why I say I'm a blogger, right? Is because I get up I roll out of bed in the morning I don't plan anything I just mm-hmm. open I open. I open the CMS like I'd open Twitter and just spam some words in and then I hit publish, you know, mm-hmm. but like, like there's like a, in a legitimate, like a publication, I suppose it's like an editorial <laughs> pipeline, right? Be. Yeah. I would love, uh, I, I would love for the power to be able to wake up, have some thoughts, mm. vomit on, on into the CMS and just hit publish. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, that is, that is just not available uh, to me. No. What about- I was worried that the E3 story was going to leak. So, so I was, you know, like we scheduled the story to, to hit at nine 30 and I was like, I was talking with editors at like midnight last night. I was like, I think my story might leak. Uh, what can we do about publishing it like now? Uh, so I, even if I wanted to pu- publish my story right away, I didn't have, I don't have the authority to, to do that. Um, or if I did, if I don't. I don't think I even have the authority in the, within the CMS to do it. But if I do, I will get in trouble for it. So. Mm. What about the idea of all right, waking up, and then just vomiting some words into a microphone for YouTube, though? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I would love to do that. And I've been considering. You know, for folks who don't know, I've been sick. I I had cancer. I've been fighting cancer for the last two years. Um, but I hopefully I'm better and. Uh, as I long as it stays that way. You had some more good Thank you, thank you. That, right? Yeah, of course. Yes. Of course it's very good. 
Oh my god. Uh, that's a whole other. Uh, that that's a whole other book to talk about. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, Rand, I would love to 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 just spout some words into a microphone, and I'm considering doing that. Uh, I think it would be a good way. You know, you, you know, just Paul Tassiet. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're also you also uh, you do like a biannual podcast on um, the Nintendo podcast on Con yeah, yeah, Con's yeah. network, which by, is which by, is good. biannual, I guess. Um, but yeah. it's, it's, every two weeks, I I never understand what bi monthly or bi or what, yeah, however you want to describe. But the thing I is, just, like, I, uh, every two weeks, we, yeah, punching up Nintendo podcasts on there's last not, media. Th- it's funny because there's not like. There, n- there's not a lot of Nintendo stuff to really ever talk about for the most part, even though they release quality mm-hmm. games quite often. It's not like Xbox and PlayStation, leaks. you know, where it's like whatever. But yeah, I mean, because I, I think I, I've heard you say like, you know, like, oh, we have we, you have the journalists, but then there's the rise of the influencer. And you think I think you've said that you uh, that influencers or like YouTubers are going to eat journalists lunch if they're not caref- careful, right? I think it's already happened. So yeah. it's already I, happened. I, think it's, I think it's already happened. You know, there's, there's no warning signs or red flags anymore. It's it's like like in my opinion, and my colleague Taylor Lorenz agrees, and she also saw this coming, is that uh, the influencers have basically replaced media as as the the information gatekeepers, um, which is which is scary and tough. But uh, you know, for me, I've never you know just like my pivot to social media back in the fucking 2005 or 2006 or whatever uh i was never one to complain about the the, the conditions of the economy or, or or the industries or whatever for me i always wanted to see okay well what what do we need to do now to to, to keep up uh, but that's always been my 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 my, my, my great pains with uh, the mainstream media or just the media uh, the the media industry in, in general is that uh, it's run by people who are very very old who have no interest in technology or or anything um and who are very very uh, uh uh they're very much luddites um i will say that i w- i once during my time at the washington post i once applied to a news organization that is extremely extremely prominent it is probably one of the more ex- prominent and dominant me- news organizations out there and the job that i applied for was training was computer training Literally turning, teaching their journalists how to fucking turn on a computer or uh, <laughs> convert a doc, in, a Word doc into a PDF. Stuff like that, man. Oh, my God. You know, and th- th- this isn't like, again, a prominent, prominent news organization. And I'm going to be training like more than 70% of, of their staff who doesn't know how to do this, you know. That's well. I mean, so, <clears throat> I've seen yeah. it in our own company over the years mm-hmm. with like uh, wanting to keep things sort of as they are and not being willing to evolve with the times and then and then you kind of you kind of at some point you're kind of forced to evolve aren't you i think so yeah yeah but 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 unfortunately by the time you're forced to evolve you end up like e3 you're dead you know Mm, yeah look look at what happened e3 took forever to to wait to evolve they knew they needed to but they didn't right and 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 that was part of that was a huge part of the reason why jeff left in 2018 because he was just really frustrated with uh, the commitment to in in person spaces and sell, selling booth spaces and blah blah blah. So, but yeah, doesn't feel good. with that's with exactly. with Jeff taking over now, right? We'll 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 kind of like shift to the you know the 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 recent topics, right? Mm-hmm. Um, like I sort of feel like with E three, you could get in as long as you had the numbers, right? No matter who you were, right? Mm-hmm. It was like a media thing. Uh, and if you if you if you met the certain milestones or certain things, you could come. But a certain, I, I feel like, I, I feel like with Jeff in charge now, and it's Summer Games Fest, and what I'm calling the Game Awards now, Winter Games Fest, because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. No longer calling it the Game Awards because it's not right. Um, I sort of feel like that is a gated community now. It doesn't matter like how big you get, unless you're with, unless you're in that. Um, Country club, I guess, is the right terminology for it. That you're never getting in is what do you, I don't know. Maybe that's just me looking on from the outside, talking to people I know that have tried to like, you know, get in that way and they get no response. It sort of, it seems like E3, you could have gotten in as long as you put in the work and hit the stuff. But now, if you don't know people, if you're not good in the clicks within the industry, 
then you may never really get invited to you know summer games fest or mm-hmm. or anything that keely does what do you what do you think about that is that kind I of i will say that it was pretty easy to get into e3 even this is even before the, the public days uh again i wrote for a really really small website tiny website man like like we'd be lucky if we get like a thousand views on, a, on an article or whatever right uh, but still, we were able to get a pass, a media pass to attend E3, and I, I, I honestly don't know how how little we got. But literally, it was a very, very small community and a very small site. Um, a lot of good writers that came from that site too. But um, but we were so tiny, and we were still able to cover E3 and do our own E3 thing. And so that, to me, is already proof. I don't think a, a website of that size uh, would be able to to attend the Game Awards, for example. You know, right. And I think part of that is because of you know the, the the very objective fact that Jeff is a much smaller organization than the ESA, and uh, he has a lot of support. Uh, a lot of the a lot of, you know Jeff is Jeff's shows are so so well produced because he has people that's worked on the Grammys and the MTV Awards and the Billboard Music Awards helping them out. So he has that expertise. Um, but in terms of an organization, you know, E3 is just a lot more welcoming, and Jeff is, a lot of it just funneled through Jeff and, the, you know, his, his, his small staff. So they have to make a lot of determinations, and uh, it's just easier for them, I guess. I, I, I'm just speaking out of my ass right now. I don't, I don't, I don't have a <laughs> no, no, yeah. concrete information, but I have to guess that, that it, it would just be a lot easier to just funnel things if you know the person. Um, but yeah, I do think, and, and I am part of the, the, that click, I guess. You, you know, like I've... Yeah, I could have attended the Game Awards if I wanted to this year. I, I was I was slated to attend Summer Game Fest. I would have been on that Ouch on Giant Bomb um, um, the, uh, uh, this the, the, this past winter or just this last week. But I just couldn't go because of, you know, travel and health issues and everything. But uh, Right. So, yeah. I, yeah how, I, how I, do you... I am, in that, I am in a click, I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you feel about... It seems like Jeff really took a lot more criticism than usual for this game mm-hmm. awards um what were your overall thoughts about uh about it uh, yeah i actually have a piece i actually have a piece up called winners and losers of the game awards uh and i actually stole that format from our politics team uh, they always do like winners and losers of like the gop debate or something right um and i talk about um i wish i talked about how good the production was um but i guess that should that, that should go without saying but you know this year was especially really good the show was really good um, but in terms, it, the, the criticism was definitely louder. It definitely feels like that it's at a breaking point um, in terms of balancing the awards versus the anger and discomfort from the developer community. You know, uh, you know, a lot of folks seem really unhappy. A lot of folks from 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 big studios. You know, uh, the, the Alan Wake team, which were big winners at the Game Awards, mm. uh, they were very critical of, of what was going on. Um, especially since I think Sam Lake was really the first one to get kind of rushed off stage. He yeah, was that of, was when that happened. I was like, uh oh, if you're rushing yes. Sam Lake off stage real quickly, we're gonna have yeah. some problems. Exactly, and 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 the thing is, is that you know, like here's the thing, you know, I don't think anyone should doubt Jeff's commitment to the developers. He he knows the Remedy guys. He he gets along with them very well. He gets along with Sam Lake very well. Um, even Neil Druckmann got rushed off stage, you know, when he won uh, Best Adaptation for The Last of Us. And we know that Neil, Neil and, and Jeff are really close, you know. The uh, mm-hmm. Last of Us Factions was fucking uh, announced uh, prematurely at, was, was it Gamescom or Summer Games Fest? It was, I forget it was, uh, it was his Gamescom show last year. I yeah, think. I think it was a Gamescom show, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you know, so Neil, you, we know Jeff, Neil, and Sam are all very close. So I don't think it's it was an issue of favoritism. I think that the the, the his staff really did fuck up in terms of uh, you know pushing people out too too far. But it is uh, it it does seem much louder this year in terms of the criticism. Every year we complain about how how it's too ad heavy, but this year it felt like almost a breaking point. And I wonder if there's going to be a change, but I doubt it though. <laughs> I doubt I, I doubt it. I I feel like. He's going to try to just shave off on another, another hour and it's going to be even tighter. And there's going to be more, even more games or ads to show. And we're just going to continue like this uh, until until he figure out a way, figures out a way to just basically replace E3 completely, you know. Um, and it's been funny to see. It's been funny to see. I, I knew E3 was, was dead for about a week. Um, mm. So it was really funny to see. This was before the Game Awards. So it was funny to see all the discourse after the Game Awards center around 
gosh, I miss E3. Or, gosh, we could really use the E3 right about now. <laughs> and when I was seeing that, I was like, oof. Yeah, oh, well, I got some news for you guys, you know? All right, Dan. So. I, feel, I feel like he wouldn't get half the criticism if he just named the show properly and called it Winter Game Fest. Yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. whole like it's the whole thing of like the game awards. We need to celebrate developers, but you're rushed off stage after twenty seconds and you give away all the awards um, off camera essentially, you I know. Do, I do feel like like they can totally keep it the game awards with some pretty easy tweaks, I would have thought. You know. Um I think some people like there's there's there is this conflict between making it cash flow positive which means sponsors mm-hmm. right but then also mm-hmm. giving the developers the airtime they deserve like when some of the categories like best rpg are just glossed over and there's no acceptance speech and stuff like that it's yeah. it, it's it's where the balance has shifted in the wrong direction and i suppose like one of the advantages the ES, the esa used to have was that like they were the lobbying group for the entire game industry, right? If, mm-hmm, if I'm mm-hmm. remembering correctly, so that yeah, like that would have had all. Pu- yeah. Oh, they still are. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Well, um, they would have had the backing of all the publishers, right? Um, for mm-hmm. to do this stuff, and then and then they were like, well, the publishers are like, hang on a sec, we could just use Twitch <laughs> and save <laughs> a load of money, but um, but yeah, I I don't know. I think I think you can stay the game awards with some tweaks. But, um, yeah, I think the I problem with the Game Awards. Difficult. I saw one tweet morning the e the E three the death of E three by saying Arena Rock in gaming is dead, and I was like, you know what? That's that's exactly I think what people are gonna miss, in yeah. that the, the 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 idea that publishers or developers or stu- studios or console platforms, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, the idea that they can host their own shows. They can own the stage, you know, but now we have, you know, that 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 famous shot of Reggie and and Sean and and um, and uh, Phil sharing the stage together. Now yeah. they have to share the stage all together, and even with the Game Awards, everybody is competing for time there. Whereas with E three, you know, no, this is Microsoft's day today. No, this is this is the afternoon for PlayStation. All PlayStation right now, all hands on deck, right? Uh, the, there's no arena uh, audience for that. The arena audience is basically whatever state of play or Xbox, uh, d- you know, uh, uh, st- d- d- studio developer director or something like that. You know, that's 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 the new arena show, but it's all online now. But there's no stage to sh- to to own anymore. You know, um, not quite like the way uh, E3 uh, allowed. <sighs> Those were the days, Xbox mm-hmm. show, and then PlayStation show later, and then Ubisoft mm-hmm. show, and nobody all misses in like the this, Ubisoft and, show. All in like a span of like, uh, yeah, but it was all together. It was all in like one day, <laughs> the Bethesda show, all within a span of like I a mean, day or two. It was, it was so amazing. You just sit there and just veg out in front of your computer, watching all these cool things. I, you know? I will say like, today, today I was doing some one-to-ones with, with my team, the, the, and and one, one thing that kept coming up when speaking to you know the games writers in my team was like like how how burned out everyone felt covering the 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 marketing cycle this summer because it was like there was a show mm. and then there's another mm. show and then another show mm. but they're like separated out but then there was all these gigantic games releasing in between these shows mm. so the 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 content cycle was ridiculous this summer brutal you know? brutal and and i think that's where um Jeff Grubb started calling it the summer game mess because it's just this mm-hmm. mess of random marketing events across the whole spread across the whole summer now while everyone tries to work out how they can have the, the most stage presence where like Ran says before it was this sort of neat little little like almost like the Olympics of game marketing mm. all in one a little, little bit week. yeah it's a little bit like an Olympic rush yeah yeah um I guess we need to talk about the reason people watch this thing in the first place, and that's not for the awards. That's for the reveals. Mm-hmm. Uh, so why anybody... Because it's like, if any, if you wanted to watch the awards, you'd be watching the Dice Awards or Golden Joystick or the BAFTAs or whatever. But um, what was... One uh, thing that, 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 let me say real quick. You know what? What that, that, Can I go on a rant for a little bit? Of course. You can yeah. rant. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I think the problem with the Game Awards, and a lot of people realize this year, is that it's trying to do, be everything to everyone, right? It's trying to be E3, it's trying to be the award ceremony to developers, it's trying to be, you know, ooh, the, the future class. Uh, one one discourse that really annoyed me last year, uh, and I haven't seen it this year, and I think people people understood it now, is seeing other journalists get mad at Jeff that the future class wasn't uh, acknowledging other journalists. And uh, that always that really irritated me. One because you know the game, the game awards is not a, a is not a ceremony for journalists. It's not for the media. Uh, two, games media is not part of the games industry. You're part of the media industry. Um, and three, we're we're, we're you're, the, the, by focusing and complaining about the the game awards not acknowledging journalists, you're ignoring the the the, the literal dozens, if not hundreds, of journalism award shows that happened uh, throughout the year. All over the place, um, including uh, prominent places like the Society of Professional Journalists, uh, nationally, locally, the Online News Association, uh, various uh, affinity groups within journalism, obviously the Pulitzer Prizes, uh, and it's. It, it, I wish that the games media press would be more integrated into the general media press in terms of joining our organizations, join the Society of Professional Journalists, attend our conventions. You know what? Host panels and teach other journalists about, like, you know, streaming and live blogging and everything. Because I think, you know, the games media press is so much more advanced than the mainstream media press. But then the games media press sees itself as not part of the the, the, the media press. Yeah. And so I don't, I, I, I didn't, so it really, really irritated me uh, that people kept complaining about the game awards. And it's like, you are not part of the games industry. This is for the games industry. This is for the studios and developers and the future class, which should be made up of developers and PR, P, PR folks and blah, blah, blah. It should not be part of the media press, you know. I, media, I, you, we have our own thing. And that's why, the, that's why for some reason, everyone kept th wanting the game awards to be everything for games. And it's like, no. It doesn't have to be. We can, we can also focus on dice. We can also focus on the BAFTAs. Those are better awards. They're the, 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 the criteria, the judgment criteria for those awards are better and smarter than, than, than the game awards, you know? Yeah, I, I completely agree with, with you, Tate. That I didn't even realize people were complaining about that. But I don't mm -hmm. follow that many journalists on, on online. But um, mm -hmm. I think that's one issue with game journalism in general is that it's a, a lot of people who are in game journalism are they're in game journalism because they love gaming and not necessarily journalism mm. and um i think you know and, and that's why i call myself a, bro a blogger because mm. i don't necessarily i'm not a trained journalist you know mm -hmm. I, never, I never did anything like that and i love gaming and so i kind of i want to be a youtuber that writes but mm. i also acknowledge that's that comes with a caveat right not being mm. part of the game industry being part of the media i think some i think some game journalists kind of um they don't see they don't want to see themselves as media or journalists because they, there's this perception that it's not legitimate journalism and i think i think that's mm. kind of wrong i think like it yeah, can i think it can be legitimate mm. journalism and there are mm -hmm. clearly legitimate game journalists out there like yourself and and jason from bloomberg and stuff but Doing the actual journalism bit is really hard, which is why I prefer blogging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, the, the games media is so different, you know. Uh, it is. It's you know, everyone's talking about how uh, the, the games media should be speaking more about Gaza, right? But then you look at the mainstream press, my my circle, and journalists are getting laid off for speaking up on, or or fired for speaking up about Gaza because we can't. Really? It, 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 even even if even even if Hitler was was back. And resurrected, we can't say, "Oh my God, they they turned Hitler into a cyborg." That's really bad. I can't say something like that, you know. Really? I, I'd be like, "Yeah, I wouldn't be able to say that because I I would have all all I would have to say is, look at cy look at cyber Hitler. Isn't he back right now? Wow, you know, <laughs> isn't that fascinating? Fascinating is the most I can say, which is why you see so many C CNN journalists say interesting or fascinating because that is the most." We can fucking say about any kind of fucking topic, you know. Is that like so? A it is. A, it is a very, very different, uh, 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 like, like climate in terms of uh, of how we can speak out about things. That's interesting. Like, yeah. say, say again. This is like the the editorial process, which I think a lot of the sort of more amateurish game journalism sites, which just frankly don't have, and are more like mm -hmm. a chasing Google's algorithm. 
And I think part like we could get we could launch into a long discussion about the damage the al- algorithms has done to legitimate journalism over the years. But I suppose it comes down to what people think they want at the end of the day, and people think they want clickbait and yeah. outrage and stuff like that. But that's a completely separate thing. But anyways, rant <laughs> over. Yeah, that's my thoughts on Game Awards, and just mm. I, I I do feel like that people understood this year that okay, the Game Awards is not for not everything for everyone. And it yeah. really is, uh, to segue back into what, what Rand wanted to talk about, it really is about the reveals, isn't it, Rand? Yeah, Rand it's, a, it's about the marketing. It's about, it's a, it's a marketing, it's Winter E3 is essentially what it is, isn't it? Like, which is, which is cool because, it, like, we, we've kind of gotten, like, a broken up E3 in years past because of the pandemic, but now it's like you get this three hours of just reveals. And it's why everybody watches the show. Um you know, so I'm wondering. So, what was what was uh, some of the the highlights for you uh, for the reveals? And uh, I mean, we'll talk about the Xbox stuff, but um, I'm curious what what kind of still sticks out in your mind. Uh, you know, like a, yeah. a few days later. Yeah, well, I made this point that it's good thing Grand Theft Auto Six didn't show up because I feel like that would have just sucked up all the energy out of the room <laughs> and, yeah. and just just a black hole of energy because um, it just would have been. Just dominating every single conversation and every single piece of coverage. Rockstar doesn't um, need Rockstar doesn't need anybody. They just do whatever they want whenever they want, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. You want to talk about Arena Rock? Like Rockstar is basically Beyonce. You know, the, the, they could just do whatever they want. You know, just shadow drop a, a game and people I, will, will line up. You know, I sort too. of, I sort of feel bad for Insomniac. They're zero twenty four in the Game Awards. Never been, never won an award, right? Uh, yeah. And they got yeah. uh they have Wolverine of War coming uh in 2025 which i'm i'm sure you saw they they got they got hit with that ransomware thing right oh they did yeah i haven't seen any they of got the did. uh I, well i, I, I mean haven't seen anything. Is it really wolverine uh wolverine looks like they it's got a war but with wolverine oh fuck man which is not too surprising but either way uh and i i said to, i said to my buddy when we were watching the awards i was like man insomniac's gonna they're gonna put out wolverine in 2025 presumably and it's probably mm-hmm. going to be really good, like all their games are. But it's going to run up against Grand Theft Auto Six, <laughs> and they're not going to win anything. Nobody's going to win anything against Grand Theft Auto Six. Okay, but, I, yeah. I see. Wolf, I see Wolverine of War. That looks okay, but yeah, sure. That is definitely Wolverine. It's it's, it's absolutely Wolverine of War. Yeah, yes, it's 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 it's, a, it's it's Wolverine the Sony game. That's what it is. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. So uh, back to your question about uh. I guess reveals that the stuff yeah the things the um, things that you liked yeah uh, I I feel like and I also covered this too I had the kind of lead coverage on this but I feel like the Sega announcement was huge at least for me coolest um, announcement yeah I I feel like that was it was interesting it was it, it, you know as Jeff pointed out on stage it was cool that it was five games in one trailer uh, it was really funny to see a lot of the the, the reactions to it. Uh, you know I've been catching up on you know some of my favorite creator reactions to the Game Awards so I always go to the Sega part. Because the commercial, the, the ad started out as a very cringy, like real life human being, like type of like, slice of life, like oh look at these fake gamers with the third party controllers and everything. <laughs> and then as soon as uh, people hear the Sonic ring, they're like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then, and then, and then Jet Set Radio shows up. And I'm a huge Jet Set Radio fan. You know, uh, Jet Set Radio Future on the original Xbox, uh, amazing game, uh, much better than the Dreamcast version, which was pr- very flawed. Jet Set Radio Future was so cool. Um, and uh, you know, Streets of Rage, Streets of Rage Four is is uh, one of my favorite games of all time. Period. Um, so it's really cool to see uh, that IP coming back. Golden Axe is cool, and Shinobi looks amazing, and it probably looks the most finished out of all the games. Um, and especially, I think it's made by the Way Forward team too. So that's very exciting. I think it's made by the Streets of Rage Four team, which is incredible. Um, yeah, isn't it? Be, I think it's made by Lizard Cube. I believe. Oh yeah, see that's just, that's yeah that's the Street, Streets of Rage Four team. Incredible, yeah, yeah. amazing. I can't wait. That, that's gonna. That was that's the, that was the one like uh, that was the one that had my. I was like, dude, Shinobi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shinobi needs to come back. Also, Shinobi is so hard too. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I never. Then, course, I don't think I never finished that game as a kid. Shinobi. I never finished it either, man, because it was so hard. It, 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 was, it was brutal. Yeah, it's difficult. crazy. I, I remember thinking Dude. when I was a kid, you're not supposed to finish this game. That's that's why I can't do it, and I just like accepted that it was never gonna get finished. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I, I was thought the same. Like it was Pac Man. It was just like a forever ongoing, like a roguelike of of, of ninja levels, right? Um, where you, you're just not supposed to finish it. You know, you're supposed to keep going. Uh, so that was exciting. Uh, 
I feel like that was probably the most exciting uh, announcement. Uh, it was nice to see uh, combat for Senua. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that that uh, that 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 secondary male character looks looked amazing, man. Like I'm still thinking about that guy. Uh, <sighs> that game he, looks he looked, incredible. Yeah, he looked crazy. So there's I'm, there, I, there's a to me almost he looked like Senua's boyfriend from the first game a little bit. Yeah, I never finished the first game because it, it was you know psychologically really tough on me yeah. actually. <laughs> like like so, he, it, I think it speaks to how effective that game was. Um, I I do, I have been wanting to kind of go back to it though, um, because I sh- I, sh- I should probably finish it before. Whenever but but no out. date, Gene. No date. No date. It's just a, 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 a year window, which is crazy. So that's that was frustrating. Um, and uh, what else was there? Uh, Blade was okay. I'm I was mostly excited. I'm not excited about Blade uh, in in general. Um, well, I lo- I love the characters obviously, but I was mostly excited to hear that it was going to be third person. Um, mm. Because I am not a huge fan of arcane games, hot hot take. Um, I, 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 and I completely include Dishonored in that. I think Dishonored games are good, but I don't think that they're one of the best games ever. Um, and I think part of that is because I grew up on Deus Ex. So games like this were already like part of my, my DNA. So when I played Dishonored, it was nothing new for me. It was just something that, that was a follow-up. Uh, but I'm excited to see them tackle third person, um, and the fact that they are kind of refocusing on single player. That's great. I still think that they make really good games. So right. I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will always be interested in what they're doing next. I just don't think that what, what they've done is amazing. I hated Deathloop. So, um, hated? Wow, that's a strong word. Hated as in, like, I, give it a, I will give it a 5 out of 10, you know? Whoa! Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seemed uh, like the rest of the industry loved it. Everyone uh, loved it. And so eight, I loved yeah. it for the first few hours. I was like, oh yeah, totally. I, I totally see this at least as at least an eight out of ten, if not ten out of ten game. And then once I got halfway through it, and once I finished it, I was like, I r- actually regret my time with that game. Really? Because I had the opposite. Yeah. I, I I hated the beginning because it was so tutorialized. Mm. And I re- for me, it picked up like once they stopped like sp- hand holding and explaining everything. But well, hey, that was always good. I, I just didn't like the way it wrapped up. I don't like the story, the way it wrapped up. I don't like the, uh, how it kind of funneled you into, you know, certain choices at the end. It's like, right. okay, I don't know. Obviously, the AI, like, I excuse the AI at the beginning. I was like, I don't care about the AI. This, this concept is interesting. Towards the end, I was like, well, if the AI was good, then maybe I could like like excuse everything else. So yeah. it was just like a whole bunch of things. But I still think that it was a good game. It's fine. I, I, it was a good experiment. I just didn't think it worked. So that's why I'm really excited to, for them to kind of go back to it. Stop fucking around with co-op, co-op stuff or Redfall. So stop fucking around with mm. online stuff, whatever. <laughs> Just make a single-player game, and I'm excited. Because they made, they also made Prey, obviously, and Prey was amazing. I think yep. Prey is the only game that I think that isn't, that, that, that isn't like overrated by them. You know, so. I think so Gene, um, not a fan of Arcane. You've heard it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've been saying that for this whole time, and even Dinga knows that I'm not a big fan of his games, so. Uh, yeah, which is sad because he seems like a really nice guy. Uh, yeah, what did you, what, so was it like, did you know it was a, the a Blade announcement was coming, like literally everybody else it seemed? <laughs> I did not know until I had to ask someone and someone, someone told me. Um, okay. So I, I did not hear about it until I heard, I heard it from another uh, content creator and then that's how I heard about it. And, so I was, I was, but that was just like two days before, so. And how do you feel about the whole lo- no logo drama? What, what, what's your uh, yeah, opinion on that, that? That's interesting. I am wondering if that's a Marvel thing where they're like, mm. you know what, don't well, don't, don't do that. Yet, this is the re- this is the intriguing thing about that. Um, Axios had an interview with a Disney exec, and mm-hmm. they asked the Disney exec about Blade's mm. exclusivity, and they said, oh, yeah, yeah, "Ask yeah. Bethesda." <laughs> no and, shit. And you asked Xbox PR, who told you to ask Bethesda. Yeah, they did. Yeah. No shit. So yeah, so so. So maybe it is coming down from Bethesda. They're like, you know what, we we knew. Well, what so if you look at Bethesda and you look at their game announcements, mm-hmm. uh, Indiana Jones didn't have platforms, right? Mm-hmm. We don't even we wouldn't even know it's exclusive if it wasn't for the FTC case, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, the original reveal for Deathloop had no platforms. The original reveal for Ghostwire Tokyo had no platforms. Mm-hmm. Uh, Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six didn't have any platforms. Um, Hi-Fi Rush did because it obviously launched that day, and so did Redfall. Uh, yeah. So I sort of feel. Me and Jez, we talked about this on Xbox too. 
And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, you know uh, theories around it. Like, is it the FTC? You know, at their whole mm. case was under a micros- microscope about what mm. they did with Bethesda, and they're still fighting the FTC. So it's like, are they just trying to like be safe and say, hey, eh, you know, case by case? Um, there's the idea of. I think Jez, you you had this as one of your theories, although I I don't agree with it. But it's it's you know you could say it's like that they didn't want to put an Xbox logo there to to basically it's kind of a version of the Xbox tax, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. About mm. if you had the Xbox logo there, then everybody just tunes that game out and doesn't care mm. about it anymore. But mm. if you leave it open ended with maybe the uh, tease that it might come to your platform of choice, now you can be excited about it. Mm. Uh, but I think me and Jazz both agree that this is just Bethesda being Bethesda and being a limited integration company within Microsoft. And it's like, this is a Bethesda game. And, you know, I guess you can say, well, why wouldn't you include the logo? But it's just, they do what they, you know, they do what they want. I don't know. What do you, I, mm. what do you think? I feel like given that history and context, I didn't know, uh, well, you know, I, I've seen all the reveals, but I didn't really, you know, break down that there were no really platform reveals for a lot of these games. I mean, given that context, and if, I feel like it makes sense, you know, um, and it's probably not as deep as we all think it might be. Um, it's, it's, I don't think it was something that I would have thought about unless it was for the discourse. Um, I would just assume that it's just an Xbox game, but... Um, and then when they, when people pointed out, I was like, oh yeah, they, they didn't do that. That's that's interesting. You would think, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe it is a Bethesda thing. Then maybe maybe it's not Marvel at all. So, I mean, maybe it's even a next gen game. So it's like you can't announce platforms because the game's so far. I, that's the other thing about this game. It's like I'm excited. I love Arcane, hmm. but I also know this game is probably like four years away. Dude, we're not gonna you know? get this until like yeah, twenty twenty seven, yeah, twenty eight. You know, and it's just like, uh, and Xbox already has a problem announcing games super far in advance. Like yeah. Hellblade Two was announced in twenty nineteen. You know, Everwild was announced in twenty nineteen, and God knows where that game is. State of the K three, like all these games. So like to me, it was like yeah, I almost the, feel like Xbox the, the didn't even game too, and Fable obviously too. Yeah, you know what? yeah, you're right, man. That's it. That you know what? Now I'm retroactively kind of annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't. Even, I don't think that this was the Xbox's like decision. I think this was like a Marvel and Bethesda decision. Mm-hmm. I think Marvel wanted it announced because it's a 50th anniversary sure. and all those things. And I, I think Xbox would have been like, N- let's keep it under wraps because we have all these other games that we've announced four years ago that mm-hmm. haven't hit yet. You know, um, so and it makes me wonder if it, if, if it's going to be tying to the, the 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 Ali movie that we haven't heard anything about for a long time. Um, so that yeah, movie's been true. for a long time too. So it makes me wonder if this is kind of like if they're trying to time it to that movie, uh, as opposed to the fucking Suicide Squad coming out like seven years or eight years later after after the movie came out and nobody liked it. You know? Yeah, poor Rockstar. Who would have thought? Yeah. Rocksteady, the, Rocksteady. Yeah. Rocksteady. But, yeah. The downfall of at one point my favorite studio. Like seriously. yeah, you know. I, I'm actually playing the Arkham trilogy on the Switch. Uh, one, don't buy it. It's fucking the Arkham Knight is terrible on it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm playing Arkham City on it, uh, which which it runs fine on the Switch. And I was just like, man, I fucking like, man, Rockstar was ro- ro- Rockstar. See, I did it too. Rocksteady was so good making these you games. Were. These what are what happened, they, Gene. I don't know, do you, man. It, how do you go from made... making Arkham Knight in 2015 and not releasing another game for nine years? Honestly, Arkham Knight has issues, but when I was playing it too, even in the shitty Switch version, I was like, man, this game was still fucking amazing, though. It was so ahead of its time. It was so content-rich, you know? Uh, There's so much shit to do in that game. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it's so disappointing. It it, it only makes it more keenly disappointing that they decided to go go with Suicide Squad. And also, fuck the Suicide Squad. No, Like, who the fuck likes (laughs) those characters? Exactly. Exactly. You know, like, like, can, can, can we just stop making the, the, this shit happen? You know, no one wants to fucking play as Boomerang. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's a character called Boomerang. Yeah. Why? The, the, the issue with the character named Boomerang is that he's supposed to use a boomerang, but in the Suicide Squad game, he's using guns. <laughs> what? Why? Why are they trying to meme Suicide Squad into popularity? It feels like no one really actually likes Suicide Squad. I don't, I don't know. know. Am I crazy? 
they're trying to make it into Guardians of the Galaxy, and nobody liked Guardians of the Galaxy either. But they just had one good movie, and, and that that was what helped. Whoa, help that's a uh, hot take right there. Nobody, <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a movies. real hot take. Well, the three good movies. I didn't watch the third one, so okay, yeah. okay. But no, I mean it's like, yeah, I feel like Su- Suicide Squad is one of those things. There's like nobody cares about the movie. Both movies failed, mm-hmm. right? And now you're making a game out of it, and it kind of just looked like a to me, just like looks like Crackdown three. You know, with a with a DC paint over it or whatever, and it's like, is it would it have been so difficult to make a Justice League game? Yeah. Like I mean, something that people actually would have wanted. Everybody would have would have rather played the just. Imagine the hype for a Justice League game, and even right? if it was just three characters, even if you're just only playing as like fucking Wonder Woman, Superman, and Green Lantern, or even if Superman wasn't even there, you could still you could still remove Superman. You know. Or even hell, fine. it's been enough time. You do another Batman game or something. Jesus. Yeah, just make you another know? fucking Batman game. We're we are not allergic to Batman. There is no Batman fatigue <laughs> anywhere. You no, know? I don't get it. I don't get There's it, man. No I saw Batman some people saying to on to speak of, you know. <laughs> I saw some people saying they should have made like a Batman Beyond. Their take on Batman Beyond or something. Mm. I think they I think mm. they were, and then it got cancelled. They should have, especially since the Batman animated suit was so so clean and wonderfully uh depicted in arkham city you know yeah this is one of the things that like kevin conroy and mark hamill it was like it was like it was the game for kids who grew up on that batman animated series really Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and i'm man it does for i'm just worried troy Troy baker actually does a decent joker so well he does he does he does he does a good joker not as good as mark hamill but then oh obviously not but yeah but the but the, I think off of that we'll come back to like the other the the Gettler Game Awards was I have expressed the concern uh, that you know Suicide Squad comes out and it's seems like it's lining up to be a failure maybe it won't be but then like if it is you know maybe they shut down Rocksteady but mm-hmm. I guess that you know that ties into the larger problems the video game industry's had this year with layoffs and studio closures mm-hmm. and i sort of feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg it's only going to get worse like w- what do you think about that gene mm-hmm. uh in terms of in t- like, gonna get worse i think like they're going to be more studio closures i think there's going to be more layoffs free radical if- was closed just today right the time yeah i think i think Oh, yeah. There's all these games like you have all the COVID studios that popped up that haven't released their games yet. Like uh, the Immortals of Avrium people released their game finally, and nobody mm-hmm. cared, and half their studio was gone. I sort of feel like the way it is now with all the games costing so much money and everybody expecting so much out of it, but there's only there's only room for so many successes, especially with the live service mm-hmm. stuff and Fortnite, like. Fortnite is now bigger than it's ever been, and now it's going to have games within Fortnite, right? With the Lego mm-hmm. stuff and the the rockets. I'm sort of just worried that we're just, you know, people complain that Jeff didn't talk about the six thousand people that lost their jobs, mm-hmm. but I sort of feel like that is just the beginning. Like as we go on, it's just going to get worse. You're going to see more studios close. You're going to see more games that are failures because mm-hmm. games just cost too much and they take too long to to make now. I don't know if you have like an opinion on that or whatever, but yeah, I mean, you know, the 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 COVID upsell is something that I can I I keenly feel because you know if you don't know, the Washington Post is currently undergoing a buyout program uh, where we're trying to buy out uh, 240 employees to leave the company, uh, and if they don't, then they'll get laid off. Uh, I actually got offered a buyout, and I I think this is actually the first time I've I've said it publicly. Publicly, I'm not going to mm. take it. I, I I intend to stay. And we'll see, we'll see how that shakes out. Uh, but um, but part of that is because we hired up so much during the pandemic and during the, the, the election, the 2020 election. And we thought that we could keep that gas going it's much in a similar way that, for example, Microsoft hired up and they laid off like what, 10,000 people or, or something mm-hmm. a, a year or two ago. Or much in the same way Epic Games hired up. Uh, or much in the same way that F- Facebook Meta hired up in, in terms of you know anticipating the, that the metaverse was going to happen like right now, as opposed to what I've always said, I I don't believe we're going to be alive when the metaverse happens. I still think the metaverse is going to happen, but I don't think we're going to be necessarily yeah. alive when it, when it's actually. Metaverse cool. is happening right now in Fortnite. 
Yeah, in Fortnite, yeah. Well, Fortnite is just the 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 the, the, the Fortnite and Roblox are just the beginning the building blocks uh, of that. Um, yeah, it's funny that because it I actually some kind of technological it. leap. I think battery tech and you know smaller screens and like mm-hmm. in in the in the sort of the the way that Mark Zuckerberg envisions the metaverse, like where he lit- where like platforms literally control what you see that's what they that's what they want really they want to control yeah, the yeah, very yeah. end point of your eyeballs it's like well okay well if apple's gonna have the palm of your hand we're gonna have their their very eyeballs and then someone's gonna be like well I'll, i will have their brain cells you know mm-hmm. elon musk with his neuralink thing um yeah yeah, but yeah yeah i think it needs there needs to be some kind of technological leap probably yeah, for sure. I think so too. And we, I don't think we're there yet. You know, no, the, the most technologically we have is Fortnite and these fucking VR goggles. You know, um, yeah. and nobody's <laughs> buying that. Nobody's buying. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know what what were what, what were we talking about. We were um, talking about like oh, game layout, like uh, game layout, studios yeah, yeah, closing all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is it gonna get worse? Probably, but, um, yeah, it's it's. I I still think you know you know you know what really shocked me was the Bungie layoffs because Bungie. Mm. Uh, is always showcasing how strong it is. Uh, shout out to Rebecca Valentine at IGN for doing that that recent uh, uh, you know deep dive into what uh, Bungie is like. Very good, very good article. Uh, very good re- article. But also, uh, Bungie has fucking monthly knitting classes. You know? Oh really? That's crazy. What knitting classes? Knitting. They have they, have, they have monthly knitting classes. Knitting hmm. classes. Where like everybody like gets with the. Stuff. With the wall and stuff, making yeah, 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 where everybody gets to learn how to fucking make clothes and shit, you know. Um, oh. So the, the so as part of the the the, the cutbacks, they're 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 reducing the, the knitting classes from monthly to quarterly, and <laughs> it's shit like that that made me think, oh, Bungie is doing so great. Look at them; they had fucking knitting classes about once a month. You know, we don't get, we don't we, dude at the Washington Post where we're owned by Jeff Bezos, the second richest uh, human to ever exist in, in the history of. Mankind, um, at the Washington Post, we don't even get a fucking free coffee, bro. We don't even get coffee. <laughs> you know? I know that feel. <laughs> and the first year of the Washington Post, where I worked at, we didn't even get the Washington Post for free. We had to we had to subscribe to our own fucking paper to read our own work, and it, it took enough of us to get mad about that. Where we okay, now I can finally read our own website for free, which is which was ridiculous. Um, and then so here, and then there, there goes Bungie having fucking knitting classes, you know. Um, so I thought that that was like I thought Bungie would be, and and Bungie and Bungie and I have spoken about you know possibly me possibly working there. Um, so I thought okay, well maybe I should I should I should you know just leave the fucking discursed as journalism industry and just go into games. Maybe I can work in Bungie. And then I hear about the Bungie layoffs, and then they even get rid of the job that I was interested in. So I'm like, okay, well, fuck that then. I don't, I don't know what to do. So uh, it's 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 part of the frustration I think with the Game Awards not saying anything or Jeff saying anything is that the, the Game Awards likes to fucking flex and posture like it's so fucking successful, but obviously you know they're not as successful as they would like to be. You know, um, and maybe they, they they could be, but then all the profits are just going somewhere else. Who knows? But I, I, yeah. But also, again, we are in a so much more risk averse environment. Uh, uh, such a risky environment to make games, um, which also is complicated by the recent day before uh, uh, controversy. Uh, I'm only catching yeah. up on that now. But I did not know that that was a whole like asset flip game. So it's interesting to see the the the, the discourse around asset flips and small and small studios kind of ed- enter in and how that might. Uh, uh, change things too. I don't it was know. like a multi-layered scam. They had like the IGN first thing, right? So like, oh so, God, some... they even got IGN. The, the, oh, dude, IGN, IGN, IGN had, had so much promotion for that game. Oh, it just kind of made me just like cringe. And like everybody knew that game was a scam, except for IGN. They had so much promotion for that game. Well, so, someone then... that someone was paying a lot of money for that. So that, ma- that, that makes that makes me feel sick. But yeah, it's probably because IGN needed the money, so they took it. You know. Well, I, I imagine that the the IGN similar to you know future like the sales team is probably separate from editorial, so the mm-hmm. sales team were probably like we'll do we'll, we we've sold this great advertising package with this upcoming game, and uh, probably like nobody within IGN's editorial sphere probably had an opportunity to veto the veto it right, so probably um, not. 
I mean, and, the unfortunate thing is that, they, they, you know, I, I think that the structure of IGN first is that the journalists do have to cover it, though, you know, so they are involved in the sales yeah. uh, portion of it. I'm which... not sure they did IGN first, but there was a lot of exclusive IGN coverage of that game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, maybe I'm wrong about IGN first, but they, they did they did have exclusive stuff. We covered it a fair bit as well because one of our writers, one of my colleagues, is a huge fan of The Division. And, yeah, yeah, and, great game. And he, was, he had this, he had all this, hope <laughs> that it was going to be like the next division right because that's mm-hmm. kind of what they were billing but then like when they launched the game they, they they started removing all mention of the fact that it was going to be a connected game and and they sort of released in this sort of scrub down extraction shooter kind of thing right um mm-hmm. it's, it's such a fascinating thing I, i'm sure and jason is probably doing a report on it or something but they've, they've mm. scrubbed, like, the CEO deleted his Twitter. They changed their name on Steam database and on all this A lot of videos stuff. are gone from YouTube, I saw. Yeah, yeah. completely vanished. It's so weird. Yeah. Makes me want kind of want to review the game now because, you know, uh, my issue as the only person writing about games at a, at a news organization is that, like, I, I, there's only so many games I can cover, and a lot of it includes popular games, and popular games are usually pretty good. Um. And so it just makes. Yeah. So I want to. I want to fuck up my overall like Metacritic uh, average by by giving by reviewing the day before and giving it a one star like like IGN did. I'm so jealous of whoever wrote that review mm-hmm. because it's always fun. It's always I, fun I to write, write write a review that just trashes something completely. So. I don't. I think if you don't own it, I don't think you can get it now because I, I believe Steam removed it. Never oh my god! It okay. It's gone. Yeah, well. it's deleted. It probably probably show up on some kind of. And dude, they, crack they, that dev was bragging before launch, right? Like, all oh, the criticism we, we received, blah, 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 blah. We're finally here. Release the game. Four days later, studios shut down. CEOs disappeared from Twitter. Games being refunded by everybody. Like, oh my. And, and you know what the funny thing is? Is people expected that to happen. Like, people were like, this is gonna, this is how it's going gonna, gonna to go down. And it, it went down that way. Crazy. Yeah, I had not been paying attention to that at all, at all. So I've just been catching up, and I was like, "Holy shit! All of that happened around this fucking game. That's crazy." Yeah. So, I I think I want I might want to cover. I kind of want to cover that dev. Uh, have you guys heard of the Crimson Dev? Oh. Crimson Dev. Yeah. Uh, so Crimson he, Desert. In, in, no. Crim, Crimson Dev. No, no. Crimson Desert is a good game, but Crimson Dev is uh this guy on Twitter, and he is a developer, and he's trying to make the day before by himself. So and he's trying to oh. demonstrate oh. he's trying to demonstrate how easy it is to 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 make an asset flip game you know basically interesting oh, that's, that's that's super super cool so, that's so, yeah so so he's actually been doing like a day by day breakdown uh, so he I I think he's about like thirty five or thirty six days in and he's already like setting up systems how the game works he's already made improvements on the UI and like the controls and everything oh yeah he's, stre- so, he's live streaming it that's awesome. Uh, he, I think he's live streaming, but he's definitely posting clips on Twitter. I kind of, I, I kind of want to interview that guy because that, that that sounds fun and funny. And um, yeah, it, it, again, it, he's he's trying to showcase how easy it is to make asset flip games. So like, be wary of this because it doesn't. It can take some work, but you know, uh, you you get an organization big enough to to uh, you get you get enough people to agree to the scam and yeah. do this then yeah you can you can easily do it you know and then you've got yeah. like... especially when it comes to making trailers yeah. uh that look good you know that, that that's really easy to do you know and ai will make all this all the extra bits easier too presumably mm-hmm. like ai mm-hmm. kind of sucks for some things but it seems to be pretty good for programming support um, yeah exactly you know ai as a co-pilot right as, yeah, as everyone co-pilot. says Windows. Code so, what do you think about the? We, we got to talk about Kojima and uh, mm. OD, uh, the game that uh, a lot of people thought it was going to be Death Stranding too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, to be fair, I thought it was going to be Death Stranding too because I I was sort of thinking Death Stranding two was coming this year. Maybe yeah. it still is. Maybe it's not. But no, it's the game he's doing with Xbox. Um, a game, I guess you could say in a loose term, because it seems to be more of an experience. Uh, or like an interactive movie. He had Jordan Peele come out talking about like collaborating with legendary directors or legendary whatever. And then people found out, people saw, uh, came out like there was like words within one of the actors' mouths and kind of like teasing Silent Hill. Mm -hmm. Uh, The door is very reminiscent of P.T. It's the 
like what do you what do you what are you what are your thoughts on the whole uh, Kojima OD Silent Hill uh, situation uh, here? The game that maybe isn't a game but a movie. Like, mm-hmm. you have any any uh, thoughts on it? I wish I had thoughts other than you know. Oh, of course, I'm always kind of interested in what Kojima is doing, right? Um, and I think it's cool that uh, we uh, that he feels that he has the authority and freedom to just make whatever the fuck he wants now at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm really so I'm always very supportive of artists doing whatever the fuck they want. At the same time, I'm not really excited for this game because I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah, uh, Jordan Peele came out and didn't, didn't and didn't describe it at all either. Uh, I'm annoyed uh, at at the enig- at the, at the at how much of an enigma it is. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of tired of, of of that act now a little bit. You know, I'm old. I'm older. You know, so so I've already been subjected to like three fucking de- de- decades of Kojima's antics, right? <laughs> yeah. So at this point, I'm just like, you, can can you just fucking tell me what the game is about, man? Come on. Man. <laughs> Please, uh, and I've asked Kojima before. I've asked him, you know, uh, why why are some of your games and the way you talk about games so impenetrable and so hard to understand? And he gave a really, really perfect answer. And he says it's entertainment. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, oh, that's great. That's, that that's it's a like great we'll answer. Part yeah, of the you, show, you know, right? Yeah, it's, really it's, cool. it's, part, it's, it's part of the show. It's, he's like, well, I'm making entertainment, aren't I? Right? And I'm like, yeah, I can't argue with that, man. Like, you know, if, if all you're doing is trying to just be entertaining and fun, then that's, that's a good reason. Like, but I, to his point, I'm no longer entertained anymore. I just want to know what the fucking <laughs> game is, you know? <laughs> I remember being a kid at school, in high school, when the Metal Gear Solid 2 marketing campaign was ramping up. And mm-hmm. people were confused about that. Because it was like Solid Snake, and then it was like, hang on a sec, that's not Solid Snake. And it was like Raiden, you know, who was pretending to be Solid Snake or something. And even that was like really yeah, confusing. Yeah, that's right. like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Raiden whole... would come out in, in, in the little mask or whatever, the diver's yeah, mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like this like, huge bait and switch. I remember discussing that at school when I was like 14 mm-hmm. or 13, whenever that game came out. So yeah, yeah. Kojima's, Kojima's just gonna Kojim. I think Rand Rand once turned Kojima into a into a verb. Yeah, Kojima's yeah, just gonna Kojim, dude. He's that's gonna all Kojim. He's gonna, do. he's gonna Kojim. That's what he's doing. And you know, it's always a red flag whenever someone says that you know it's 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 more than a game, or it's not just a game, or it's a, it's a it's an experience or whatever. That's always a red flag. Um, yeah, it, there's there is a level of pretension, I would say. And yeah, I I'm I'm here for it. I love I I love Kojima just being up his own ass. That's great. But I, I'm I'm here for that. <laughs> but I just want to know what it is, and yeah. and just a bunch of white people screaming at a camera, uh, <laughs> isn't isn't going to do it for me. It is funny to see uh, the the Hunter Schaefer clip uh, go viral in terms of you know, uh, and I, I feel like it's become a meme now. When white people blank, and then it shows mm-hmm. Hunter Schaefer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's hilarious. Um, yeah, the, the, and those screams were very, very, I don't know, like, odd. Like, I, I don't feel like that they were well acted, you know? It just felt like, oh, yeah, that's... If I felt like I was watching, like, stock footage of people being scared, you know? I, I, um, I, I've got a feeling that Microsoft and... Microsoft's advanced technology groups involved in this, and Kareem Chowdhury is heading up their AI division... So I can't help but wonder, like, is I is are they training a large language model for this game somehow? Are we gonna have to mm. speak to the game, you know? And all this kind, all these kind of like things co- popping into my head now, because because mm-hmm. they probably went to good gym and was like, look, we've got all this technology, we don't know how to turn it into a video game. You do it, because mm. that's kind of mm. like the pitch he made to Google about the cloud, right? When he was like, what right. what does a cloud native game look like? Nobody knows. Nobody mm-hmm. really knows. So, yeah, I'm also yeah, this pretty is, intrigued. I guess this is the first Microsoft cloud game since Crackdown 3. And for the record, I love Crackdown 3. I think I think Crackdown 3 is a fucking great game. I love oh, that man. Game. I, yeah, I, it's, I, that, I think that's it's so also fun. a hot take. That gene was the hot yeah, take. It's a hot take. I love Crackdown 3. Crackdown 3 I, I, I rated it. higher than uh, Deathloop, confirmed by Gene. <laughs> 100%. I, 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 if you ask me, Crackdown 3 greater than Deathloop. Easily, easily. Greater than oh Dishonored, even, Lord. man. Even, oh, I like it better Gene. than Dishonored, well, man. I, I actually, I actually <laughs> finished Crackdown 3, but I didn't finish Deathloop because I got bored. 
There you I go. Never, yeah. I never We're talking about board. Crackdown 3, the campaign, or the actual cloud gaming part. Uh, the, 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 the campaign. The campaign. Multiplayer. I actually I, played I, even touch, I, I feel like the multiplayer didn't even exist when I played it, but yeah. 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 The, the campaign was great. It was another <laughs> Crackdown game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Gene, we couldn't be farther <laughs> apart on this one, my friend. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Crackdown it. 3 was... It wasn't awful. It was just boring. It was just so incredibly boring. You could blow, it, it was you very much like, cars like, around. go do this, go go take down the Dude, gang HQ. It, that um, game was like, okay, once you do you like the seven events around. that you do on the left hand side of the map, that's all you do for the whole rest of the map. It was just like I already been uh, whatever cracked out. Yeah, that's three. fine. I like that. <laughs> I know. I mean, people will like. I did not. I was bored out of my yeah. mind. I, I recognize that I'm obviously in the very, very huge minority in terms of, <laughs> of loving Crackdown Three. But hey, I like Crackdown Three. Joe Staten. It was, it was Joe Staten's last game before Halo Infinite. You know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and uh, you know, hey, what what do you think about the Halo Infinite Resurgence? Oh, that's I'm excited. The, I actually, I actually yeah. booted up Firefight uh, for a little bit last week. Um, it was great. It was great. I was like, oh my god, dude! If only Halo Infinite was like this at the beginning. Man, even even if it just had firefight and and just like the basic mu- multiplayer suite at the beginning, even for like the first six months, I feel like it would have been. And firefight was integrated into like the battle pass uh, progression system and everything. Uh, if only they did that, then 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 I feel like Halo Infinite would be at a much better uh, space. But it's good now. It's good. I mean, one, I've always been a huge defender of Halo Infinite. I always think Halo Infinite was always good. Um, the only, the only, the, its biggest issue was that it, it just ended up becoming a very poor live service, you know. Yeah. Um, so now playing Firefight and seeing the the the, the point integration into it and uh, having PVE with a bunch of randos and we're all working working together, uh, really reminded me of back in the day with Halo Reach or even Halo ODST. So um, it's great. It's great. I'm I, I'm I'm excited to play more play more uh, uh, again soon. You know, probably this weekend. Yeah, hopefully they can string together some more really cool seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I mean, Paris just talked with Sketch from 343 on kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously they got more Halo st- games coming. I just wonder how, you know, how that's going to be. Is Halo... You had a you had a weird take on Twitter. Well, not a weird take, but you, you did one of your, like, wouldn't it be cool if kind of things... Where it almost oh, yeah. sort of Jazz, seems Jazz, like what did Jess say? Yeah, what? Jazz, what, what was your was, what was your I, thing about Halo? I was I was asking for no reason at all, and I specified yeah, that. Yeah, sure, right. no reason at all, my ass. Dude, I said yeah, no, no re- for no reason yeah, whatsoever. Uh huh. Uh-huh. No for, reason whatsoever. For okay. no reason whatsoever. Um, hang on, let me find a tweet. It was something like for no reason whatsoever. How would you feel if the next Halo was just a campaign oh, yeah. with a link with a link out to Halo Infinite multiplayer? And Halo Infinite is the multiplayer for Halo for the foreseeable future as a sort of oh, yeah, yeah, Fortnite-y yeah. kind of expanding life service in perpetuity. You, you, want a hot, you want a hot take from me on that? Yeah, go for it, man. If you ever want Halo Infinite's multiplayer to be super successful, you have to start over. Mm. It cannot be tied to Halo Infinite. Mm. I disagree. I disagree, baby! Unless, un- unless in the next two years they're able to like get Halo Infinite on the level again where it's like top 10 on xbox you know fifty thousand people are playing it on steam uh then they have to start over with the new multiplayer is it because of the uh the the stink on the halo infinite brand or is it the the, the technical debt that they've been trying to catch up i don't know i I just sort of feel like if if you all of that together right maybe i feel like it, it had in this day and age with all these games competing for your time first impressions are really important and halos while its first impression was great you said it gene as a live service it failed mm-hmm. right people left halo infinite because there wasn't anything to do after uh you know they got tired of the maps or whatever and it took a long time for the game to reach the current state it's in and it's great now but i don't think people are, i don't think the, you're never going to get those people to come back like you won't get two hundred and fifty thousand people playing concurrently on steam again and it's not going to be like nah. in the top five on Xbox. You are the wrong, only way man. You, could, you are the wrong. The only way you can do that is if you relaunch it nope. as a new Halo game nope. with a new multiplayer and get the hype nope. cycle flowing nope. again. Nope. Absolutely. Nope. 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 That's, that's my wrong. hot take. Cyberpunk, you want Halo? Cyberpunk disproves this theory 100%. No. No, nope, it does. And I tell you why. Because all you need is 
the campaign for the Halo Infinite 2, whatever that looks like, Halo, Halo even more infinite -er, um, whatever the next Halo campaign looks like, if that is good and it links out to Halo Infinite multiplayer, people will feel good about Halo again because of the campaign, and they will try the multiplayer, which is now good, and has everything. It has Forge mode, it has Firefight, it has all these custom modes and all the whatever. They'll try it again on that basis, and the whatever free maps and modes and, and whatever new season comes as a result mm. of that, and that can be its relaunch. You could even give it a different name, but I think it'll be the same client. And I think it'll be the same system because I think like we've entered an era now where it's just like building it up from scratch would be even harder, even harder than just growing out what they've had. And I think this is the, this is the whole point of Halo Infinite being called Infinite in the first place. It's it's their metaverse now for Halo. And there was mm. that survey that went out recently where they were like, how would you feel if Halo Master Chief Collection essentially was inside Halo Infinite? that's the direction that Halo's multiplayer is going in. And I think I think Cyberpunk's proved it can return to form. Battlefield, some Don, Don Sega, Don Sega the attacker, who's changed his name, in chat says... Yeah, he's, an Inten he's a Nintendo fan, though. We don't take what he says seriously. But he, he brought Battlefield 2042, which has exceeded its original concurrent player's peak. Sure. Well, talk to me when Halo does that again. It will, man. When, when they release we'll the campaign, the next campaign mode... Which features Master Chief and his Master Cheeks, you know, going toe to toe with the Flood or something, and it's at, and it, and imagine that it's actually a really good Halo game, a really good game. No one's gonna care that Halo Infinite used to be bad. Personally, I think it will work. Mm. I, I think I think yeah, I believe, man. I believe. Life after I mean, love. that's good. That's good. Is there uh, any other games from the Game Awards? Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds. I know that Jez was Jez's oh, yeah. favorite. Ooh, Monster you, Hunter uh, is huge for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people were like, "Oh, I don't know if that's a game too." You, know, you, you forget that that is Capcom's cash cow, guys. That is Capcom's cash you, cow. You a Monster Hunter guy, Gene? Did I know this? I'm a huge Monster Hunter guy. I've, uh, oh, well, not since dude. like the, the beginning, but it's just Monster Hunter try. Um, and then Monster Hunter uh, Ultimate, and then World. I loved, I loved, 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 and I loved Rise too. So um, super. I, I tried to get into to Wild play. Hearts. We have I, to and play. I couldn't. I could not get into Wild Hearts. I was like, this is not Monster Hunter. So no, I'm sorry. No, I'm, so I was um, the same. Like Wild Hearts is okay, but it it didn't have game. the fine, dynamism, yeah. the the hitboxes and the dynamism. It felt a little bit too canned almost. When you hunt in Monster Hunter, there's, there's like all this. Dynam these dynamic aspects which every once in a blue moon make you feel so good like when you we, land we, when you land that true charge slash at the last second yeah. oh it's my like, God. Oh. Yeah. but like but like wild hearts gave you that feeling way too much so it started yep. feeling formulaic and i exactly. think that's that's what they exactly. got they get that's what they got wrong man but it was an admirable try and i i, I hope they get i hope they sort of I do want to see more Wild Hearts because it would be cool if Monster had a, had a, had a real true compare because could Dauntless ain't it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Dauntless play, wasn't Gene. it. I tried to get into Dauntless, but it wasn't it. But Wild yeah. Hearts is cool. It could be like a more action, like a more, you know, uh, spastic Arcade version. Well, I, it's, it's not, not spastic. Uh, more di di dynamic version of Monster Hunter, but you know, yeah. More chaotic version. Yeah, I, yeah, man. We we got to play. We got to play when it comes out, Gene. Yeah, yeah. What do we think? Do we think it's going to be a, 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 a seamless world, or do we think it's still going to be? Uh, I think. Off levels. I don't know where I heard this, but I th I'm sure I read somewhere that it's going to be fully open world. Oh man, that'd be crazy. And, and that, that's the that'd be a first for Monster Hunter. Yeah, that'd be a first for him. I don't even know what that what, what that could look like. <laughs> I have no crazy. idea if that's true, and I can't remember yeah. where I read that. Or if it's yeah. speculation or some interview, I should probably do some. Just see that mounts mounts are still a thing. Yeah. Instead of dogs, we just have bird dogs now, so I, that's cool. I kind, of, I kind of feel like if you are making a gigantic world, you probably do need a tra traversal traversal option. And mm. rise the rise hubs were pr quite big sometimes. Mm. Ah, man, I don't care. I just I'm just so excited for it, man. So excited. We can go off on a tangent about Monster Hunter Night. I know you guys could, and I I couldn't care less. I don't. But then again, I mean, I fair enough. I've never played a Monster Hunter game, but it just you like doesn't really... you like Death. They are not easy games to get into. Yeah, yeah. Rand, uh, you see, it, it, Rand only plays like... trending games. You see, Gene. 
Well, you know, but I mean, what, you want to say that to Gene, though, because Gene's, Gene said Alan Wake 2 was the most creative game of the year. Yeah, Alan Wake 2 is my favorite game. And it's, Yeah, oh. I loved Alan Wake 2. My game, that was my game of the year. I could actually finish that now I'm in England, and I could, I've actually got control of the TV. It just hasn't even finished Chapter 1 yet. I have yeah. finished oh, Chapter 1. Did I? I killed the first boss. That's Chapter 1, isn't it? Yeah. The one you the, the boss you said was really hard and then I just sleepwalked it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would consider the, the everything up to the first boss as as like the uh, tutorial. Everything after that is like the real game. That's when the real yeah. game starts. I'm going to I'm um, going to yeah, I'm going to play I'm going to play that. Yeah. Give it a shot because that, that that's it, I wasn't even sure about whether I liked the game until after the first boss. Uh, I feel like after the first boss is when the actual real game starts. I was like, oh, I know. I get what this game is doing now. It's, it's good. So. I, lo- I love Alan Wake. I mean, I'm a huge Alan Wake fan. I played Alan Wake Remastered literally right before Alan Wake 2, just mm. to kind of re- refresh my memory. And I, 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 like, I loved it so much. It hit every, every note I needed it to hit. Mm-hmm. And, and then later. some... I played the original Steam release, the one with the still with the Verizon and Energizer Bunny uh, ads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it was kind of weird going from the gameplay of Alan Wake One to then playing Alan Wake Two. Very very strange because you know uh, if you don't know, Alan Wake One is one of the best controlling games ever made for some reason. <laughs> Controls very good, but it does. You know, uh, that, you know what I was uh, sick of by the acceleration on, on the flashlight on the right stick is so perfect. You know. I was sick uh, by the time I finished Alan Wake 1 and the DLCs was every time you get into uh, a battle, it slows down and shows you the enemy where it does mm-hmm. that like slow zoom in. I was like, oh, enough of this. Like I've seen mm-hmm. this I don't know how many times already. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Alan Wake, what, what, what a g- I'm so happy uh, they got to make that game. Uh, the, the final draft is out. I, I did watch a, uh, the new ending for the game. I did, I did oh. check that out on YouTube. Mm, don't tell uh, me I'm, I'm still making my way through it. Yeah, uh, I know there's still like DLCs and stuff to come, but I yeah, so I love there's a new I, game plus for Alan Wake Two, and it it adds new story content for for mm-hmm. your second time around, um, and that that starts happening immediately. It's not just a new ending and yeah. oh you, you have to wait for it. No, immediately from the the first two seconds, uh, uh, things are different, and then and then it starts to make you question your sanity c- c- because you're like okay was this here the last time I was here I don't remember I don't know. So yeah, and then I swear to God, like there's the some of the line the the, the line reads are different now, like when Saga says he vanished, and but she used to say he vanished. I'm just like, mm. well, why why are you making these changes? This is so bizarre. You know? well, it's it's a new loop, Gene. You know, yeah, it's a new loop. That's crazy. I love it. You know, I know. yeah, it's great. Okay. I just don't. Oh, have one other to... I really loved was uh, Visions of Ma- of, Ma- of Mana by Square Enix. Ooh, um, okay, yeah, Square it's Enix. a huge uh, Secrets of Mana fan. Um, Trials of Mana, um, love that game. If you guys haven't checked that out, um, the, the remake of Secret of Mana Three. Um, I think I picked really, it really up good. on Steam. It's on Steam, right? I think. I yep, it's on Steam. It. It's, it's 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 on every platform. It's really really good. Um, it's very very basic. So if you just want like a cozy basic ass RPG, that's oh, what yeah, it is. Love, what what about it. um Hello? I always forget their name. Hello. Oh, Hello Games. Yeah, like Hello no Games. Fire. Yeah, like No Fire. There. I'm their new, moder- new title. I am kind of excited for it because I don't know what it is, but it looks really good. I, I, I love the vibe of it. I love the aesthetics, uh, the idea that it's some kind of like alternate Earth or whatever. Sounds yeah. really fun. You but know? it's like, like, are you promising too much? Don't do it. Don't do that's it. That's hilarious. You know, like... I love that. I love that. I love that he's leaning into the joke too. So. Yeah, because it makes it better. But um, another game that... I wasn't like when it, when it played. I was like, eh. and then the developer showed. I'm like, okay, is um, no rest for the wicked from the devs yes. of, of of Ori because Ori Studios. I will die on this hill. Ori in the Will of the Wisps is the best Xbox game from Xbox One generation. I think it's better than most games that come out. I think it's. I I'll say this to Nintendo down the Otaku in chat better than any Mario game that's come out in recent years. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it, I don't, but then again, I don't play Mario games, so I'm just saying it to piss him off. You know what I mean? Um, you know what? I, 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 Ori is so good. I would I would call it better than Mario Wonder for sure. So, um, I so I, need to play. I, I feel like I feel like Ori never got the recognition it deserved, mainly because it was on Xbox. Yeah, uh, yes. and I think it's Xbox better than Hollow Knight. Been... You guys, I, I don't I don't like Hollow Knight that much either. But you know, oh my god, I thought, I thought it was better. I thought it was better than Hollow Knight. You know. Gene with the mm. co- I would agree tanks. with you. 
I would agree with you. I like Hol- mm-hmm. I like Hollow Knight a lot, and uh, I think Hollow Knight's I w- great. I would agree. But, it's it's yeah. better than it, or at least I enjoyed it more. So when when it popped up that they were doing this game, I'm like, all right, now that's rocketed up my most anticipated list. Yes. But I guess uh, since we kind of mentioned it, and this has been a topic that's been going on since the Game Awards things announced, and me, I'm kind of over talking about it, but I want to hear other people's opinions on it. Gene, the Xbox tax. Mm. Uh, this conversation that doesn't seem to ever want to go away. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, I kind of want to know what you think on this. Or, or you know, I'm sure you've seen the, the, the discourse tax. surrounding it. Um, what? what the, the Xbox tax is trending again. Today. Again? Of course, because of the oh, IGN yeah. thing. The IGN article. Right. The <laughs> IGN article. So I, I figured, all right, Gene, what do you, what do you, you're, you're a journalist. We we see some takes. Uh, I wanna I wanna get your your uh, your, your thoughts on all this. What, the I Xbox mean, as, tax is it real? Is it mm-hmm. make believe? Is you know like whatever. Say whatever you want. You know, it's probably more real than people think, but it's Ooh. way less real than it needs than people should be worrying about. If that's mm-hmm. if that makes sense. And basically what I mean is that I think that every journalist has some kind of bias. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think at this point, um, there is a PlayStation bias, but only because it's the platform that a lot of developers uh, have used it as the lead for since the the, the PS4 generation in 2013. Um, I don't think that there was an Xbox tax during the the seventh generation with Xbox 360. I think a lot of people really, really favored the Xbox 360 back then. Um, But... And I feel like that that was re- really reflected in like the whole like like separate JRPG discourse where like around that time 2008, 2008 to 2012 everybody was really looking down on Japanese games and calling them weird or wacky or uwu or whatever um, because you know the Xbox the Xbox has Gears of War and the Xbox is, yeah has it's the Dude Bro system you know? right Dude yeah bro. the Dude Bro system and Western RPGs you know and, and freedom and 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 British accents you know. So that was like the whole thing, and so I do feel like that there was a huge bias back then, and then it started to swing around once the PS4 became so dominant and the Xbox One, again with like with Ori, the, I do like Ori paid the Xbox tax, right? Mm-hmm. Games like Sun- Sunset, that's why I'm saying that the Xbox tax is real because Sunset Overdrive paid the fucking Xbox tax, right? Yep. Like being on a platform that 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 was. And that is my definition. It's funny we have the same definition of it. It's not mm. like a collective conspiracy by reviewers to rate games lower right yes. xbox games lower it's and i do agree with you reviewers will have an unconscious bias but i don't think it really plays in too much my mm-hmm. thing is that xbox is paying the tax for because their platform is just less popular less people in the media are playing it mm-hmm. so their games get less coverage it's why halo infinite or sea of thieves never get nominated for best ongoing game because mm-hmm. the journalist that's not their system that's not yeah, the one they're playing on all the time. They're playing on their PlayStations or their PCs. So mm-hmm. it's funny that we basically have the same same take on it. We we kind of are are lock lock and lock and lock step with the yeah, Xbox. Yeah. I, I didn't know the, the algorithm as you thought about it. Yeah, but yeah, the I'm algorithm sorry, has an imp- I was going to say the algorithm has an impact here too, right? It's like a chicken and egg thing where there's you know there's less search volume, so the multi-platform sites maybe don't give it the same kind of shake, and or it's less prioritized editorially potentially sure. whereas like yeah. windows central we only cover xbox so we go hard yeah. we go we go hard so hard that we're up at two in the morning look at microsoft patents they've filed and and mm. hacking the the code off the system and read mm. reading what it says but um but the for for other sites where they're, they're sort of multi-platform I, I can see why they wouldn't want to do that you know you got to kind mm. of be passionate to be up at two in the morning reading a patent um but uh, uh, yeah, that's the I, 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 so that's why I think the Xbox tech because because the games like Sunset Overdrive and it's it's the same teams a lot of the same teams that worked on Spider Man and Spider Man Two also worked on Sunset Overdrive. It's the same engine, the same animators, um, and is it is just honestly I think I think it's a better game than Spider Man, but mm. no, no nobody thinks of it that way because nobody fucking played it because because nobody played it on an Xbox One. Whereas I bought it, I actually didn't buy an Xbox One until way later in the generation because that that was my Xbox tax because I, I knew that the PS4 was better and the Xbox One was struggling and that was of course the uh, the uh, the the narrative of the Xbox One, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the Xbox One X that came out 
And that was when the narrative started to shift, where, where Microsoft was saying, hey, we're, we're back in the power game. And when I found out that Xbox One X was the only 4K version of Red Dead Redemption 2, mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, and I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 on PS4, and I was like, this looks like fucking Vaseline-covered garbage. I can't play this right <laughs> now. <Yeah. Gee>. Um, <laughs> I, I could not he play... Tell you were wild. Red <laughs> yeah, Red Dead 2. <laughs> it, it was just, just caked in, in, in oil, you know? Um, so when I played on the Xbox, I was like, oh, this is what I needed. It looks gorgeous on the Xbox One X. And then finally, uh, I was I was like, okay, well, I got an Xbox One. Let me go back and play all the other games, uh, all the other exclusives that I might, might have missed. And of course, I checked out Sunset Overdrive first. And I was like, wait a minute, Sunset Overdrive is one of the best games I've ever played. And I played Ori, and I was like, oh, this is one of the best Metroidvania games ever made. I played Rise, and I was like, wait, why is everyone making fun of Rise? This, that game was fucking fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And then Crackdown well, 3, and I was like, Crackdown 3 was great too. I was like, what are, what are we talking about? Like, like Rise, <laughs> got, a lot Rise of got it. Rise got it because it because because Xbox One was a joke, and everybody took it out on Rise because mm-hmm. that was like the launch game, right? So people, I think it's like game. a 60 on Metacritic, and it doesn't deserve that. It doesn't deserve uh, that. It's 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 much better than that. Um, it's it's yes, obviously it's a very linear and, and very simple game, but for what it does, it's it, it does it pretty damn good, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree. What so you you mentioned the One X thing? Do you think Xbox will have any issues? You know, rumors of the PS5 Pro coming out next year, um, and we've seen Xbox leaked roadmap. They say it's not 100 percent accurate, mm-hmm. but I mean, do you think Xbox will? I mean, Xbox has a problem selling consoles now because you know they're on PC and they're everywhere, and PlayStation is just the dominant default console people get. Uh, but do you think there'll be even a bigger issue if Sony puts out a PS5 Pro and Xbox just puts out a refresh of the Series X and S, but not extra power? Is would that is going to be a big issue or like not really? Not because you, you know we never even found out how many PS4 Pros they sold, um, or even what Xbox One Xs. You know, so I feel like that number was very very low, and it was very much for for people like me. That said, if Grand Theft Auto Six ends up looking better on the PS5 Pro than the Xbox Series. Well, I'm, I'm playing Grand Theft Auto on the PS5 regardless, because I just associate Grand Theft Auto with the PlayStation brand. That's where mm-hmm. it got big. Although I did play uh, the Grand Theft Auto 4 uh, big time on the Xbox 360. Um, and at Grand Theft Auto 5 too, again, because that's the Xbox 360 was the console back then, right? Indeed, indeed it was. Indeed it, it was. was. Yep. Um, and, but, uh, but again, when, when they did the next-gen upgrades, though, Right. Remember when Grand Theft Auto V did the next gen upgrades, and you can transfer mm-hmm. over the save file to yep. the next gen upgrade. Uh, I I I had it on the Xbox 360. Did not have an Xbox One, so I bought the PS5 or PS4 version of Grand Theft Auto V, and my save from Grand Theft Auto V on Xbox 360 now lives on the PS4. So that was the, that was a very very straight uh, example of of how the Xbox tax kind of came came in during the PS4 generation. Um, so yeah, I would be wondering if if because I feel like Grand Theft Auto Six would be a console seller. Like people will buy new consoles for Grand Theft Auto Six too. Oh, 100 you know, If you don't have a console by now, you buy it now. You you would buy it now. You would buy it. Jez, now, you know? Jez made an art uh, wrote an article that uh, Microsoft is in a uh, a really could potentially be in a really good position to selling uh, Series S's. Yes, Series S's to like PC people who won't be able to get the game day one on PC because it's not mm-hmm. going to be there. Mm-hmm. And that that could really be a benefit, uh, you know. Uh, I agree with that too. I agree with that too. I, I think that's that's an interesting thing because you know, especially if, especially if they, they they if they somehow drop the price for the Series S to make it even a better deal because the Series S is a great console, honestly. Uh, it's actually where I played a lot of my Alan Wake too. Um, mm. But um, it was very it was a very good uh, port job by them too on the Series S. Yeah, I, the, right now it has problems with uh, always crashing uh, on the oh, Series well, S. Otherwise, the, the port is good, but it always crashes for some reason. Um, so that's why I, I eventually switched to the Series X because I found out that it was very much only a Series S problem. Sounds like a for some reason. issue. Uh, yeah. Running out of run. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about uh, uh, the, the, pro, the pro consoles. Um, yeah, I, I wonder how that. expensive they're going to be. Because, you know, Sony raised in prices, they raised the price of the digital. They're still at $499. If it does come out this year, I just don't see Sony dropping. Their regular PS5 to 399, so the Pro can come in at 499. 
Mm-hmm. And the way Sony's script. margins are right now, they're not really very healthy. Yeah, I sort I of feel like, pro. yeah, I, I feel like the pro is going to come in. in like 700 or something. At, I mean, it'll, 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 it'll come in at a high number because they don't probably want to lose money on it. Mm. You know, I don't know. It, it'd be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, how do you, you know, Xbox is, we, we went through the year 2022 where they didn't have shit. They got reamed for it. 2023 was a better year, although, you know, some people will say, hey, Redfall was garbage. Starfield didn't review as well as it should have, even though you loved it, I loved it, right? Jez mm-hmm. loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, they seem to be at least uh, getting back into the cadence of, uh, of finally, like, releasing a big game a quarter. I mean, how mm-hmm. do you view the future of Xbox from 2024 and beyond now with the acquisition of Activision Blizzard and everything? Oh. Honestly, I think it looks better than PlayStation right now at this moment. Uh, you know, I I feel like an under under uh, talked about point about twenty twenty three was that PlayStation had a really really slow year, man. Mm-hmm. Um, they they are lucky that Spider Man two is uh, literally a band aid that's just covering up. It's just it's just lipstick on a pig, right? Spider Man two was lipstick li- lipstick on that pig to make to make twenty twenty three look better than it was, but. You know, PlayStation was really, really weak. And look at the Game Awards. You know, the, uh, there was barely any presence from, from Sony in the announcements. They didn't win any awards. Uh, and I, I mentioned in my article, the winners and losers of the Game Awards, that Sony was the was one of the losers. You know, it, they didn't come out looking good at all. And we, we came out, we, you know, even Colin, who is very much uh, like, you know, a Sony, Sony advocate, is now at the point where he's like, I am now really, really worried about the the the, the, the future of PlayStation Five because we don't know shit other than like live service games and fucking Wolverine and I, I guess Marathon, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and Concord or whatever, you know. And like, you don't know anything about that. Concord though. So. Yeah, we, we don't know what, anything about Concord or even Marathon other than like some people don't like it. Some people what even is it Concord? Probably, probably didn't like it. Concord's a sh- first-person shooter, I believe, by Firewalk, I want to say. Firewalk, whatever, Fire Sprite, I don't know. Yeah, one of the Fire Studios over there. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's another space game, you know? Yeah, but we don't, yeah. I mean, who knows if it even comes out. Game delays happen all the time, right? I, so um, I, I, th- I think Xbox had a better year overall, despite the fact that Starfield didn't review as well as, 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 as you know, I think people hoped. Um, despite that, I think Xbox had a busier year. Uh, you know, obviously it won uh, the, the case too. So I think in terms of, you know, dominating a news cycle, it was Xbox. And Xbox has, uh, you know, I'm looking more forward to Xbox games than I am with PlayStation. Because right now, I, I guess there's Wolverine, which I wasn't even that looking forward to. I'm not I, I'm not super excited about the Wolverine game. It's only exciting because Insomniac is making it. And I'm mm-hmm. always excited about the Insomniac game, period. But like we got Fable coming on, we got, um, we got I guess Blade or whatever, um, and uh, I'm Avowed, right South Avowed, Midnight. obviously South the Midnight's game. rumored for next year now because of a LinkedIn. Link. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and even, and even whatever Starfield DLC that that hopefully comes out soon. I really think that Bethesda should should get cracking on that. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully actually, their schedule uh, has made it so that it comes out real soon. So. We actually had some breaking news during the show that Bethesda randomly mm-hmm. dropped on Reddit where they're saying that the big update for Starfield will come at the start of next year. They're going to add full-blown uh, city and city and building maps to the game, which is something everyone's been oh, complaining yeah. about. Oh, yeah. I, I did see that. And Traversal, too, possibly. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Strongly hinting at new ways to travel. So that could be ground vehicles, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently there's other stuff as well that I've, I've been hearing whispers about for early 2024 mm. so maybe starfield will have a, a renaissance and they they have talked about supporting the game over time but i'm, I'm yeah, with you I, where I it's like that, I, I still believe that history will be kind to starfield i i, I still believe that i, yeah, I, I think I believe so. what the you... of the discourse and you know the, the 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 launch i think people will end up saying yeah starfield was starfield was good you know is it just me gene or was there a lot of I don't want to use the like hate, but there seem to be a lot of articles attacking Starfield uh, more so than any other game I've seen in recent years. Yeah, I don't like understand. the SEO push to include Starfield and in everything. Yeah, yeah, like, and then uh, and then that that the, the, there was that clip of of Destin uh, uh, trying yeah. to defend Starfield by saying it's a single player adventure to play, and then the other guy, the the quote unquote mustachio guy, which uh, yeah, it's funny enough, I actually don't know his mustachio. name. So he is the, Damien, he is also uh, the mustachio guy. Yeah, Damien. Do you guys know his name? 
Uh, Damien Hayfield, uh, Hatfield, I believe. Oh, his is name it Damien? Is? Okay, I, yeah. ne- I never saw his face before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he was like saying, "Oh, but it, but it is dropping," and it's like, "Well, it's a single player, but it is dropping." I was like, "Yeah, I mean, like, what do you want?" You know, like, like I'm getting older. Like, I just like, find like, it like, weird to, that people were like comparing older by the second. Like, like you can just say that, and it's a fact. You know, like. like yeah, this is like I don't know why people were comparing it to Cyberpunk. It was like, dude, Cyberpunk got these updates three years after it came out. Do people not remember what it was on consoles when it launched? Like yeah. Sony removed it from their freaking store, and it's like, oh, this this game that has three years of updates, were compared to this game that just came out. It, I, mm-hmm. I feel like some of that stuff was just incredibly unfair. Yeah, and like I get mad about that because like Cyberpunk is the game that lied about what it was. Starfield didn't lie, I, and I said that from from the from the very beginning. I was like, if you watch the original fucking, and we said this on 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 the spoiler cast, I think uh, that, that Rand and I was on for defining Doom, yeah. uh, that if you go back and watch, and and Maddie also did this too. If you watch the the, the Starfield direct, everything they say is in the game, and they didn't. I think that the, probably the thing that they that really fucked them up is when. Um, Pete Hines said, "said you know walk on, buddy, you know or whatever." Like I think that was probably the, the their their biggest mistake, of him just saying that and like make, making people assume that there were no boundaries in terms of walking. But otherwise, Starfield lived up to everything. You know they showed they showed the 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 the, the gameplay loop. They showed the loading screens there. You know that's what it was. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joaquin has a question in chat for Eugene, and this kind of mm-hmm. goes along to our earlier discussion about the Xbox tax. He says. Do you think Xbox could skip traditional media outlets and give previews, interviews, and codes to YouTubers and streamers? Mm. He wants because uh, he he's of the opinion because he'll DM me stuff and he'll be like, they just yeah. need to like drop IGN, not even give him anything, and just give it to everybody else. And then mm. I'm like, I don't think that's gonna happen, buddy. But mm. you know, yeah. What's up, Joaquin? Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna happen, and I don't know if it is the right thing to do because even IGN headlines can still make a splash. I mean, look at how, look, look again, you know, a fucking article about uh, canceling subscriptions on Game Pass is, uh, has started all, all, all this discourse and we're even talking about it here. Mm-hmm. So IGN still retains like a lot of power in terms of, of coverage and, and their ability to shift conversation. I think it's really, it'll be really, really hard to, to, to get away from that. Um, but that being said, that is what a lot of the industry has been shifting towards. You know, it's just skipping uh, the, the media and working with creators directly. Oh, and that's why there was that whole fucking discourse about that one indie developer who was talking about feeling icky that he needed to pay uh, content yeah. creators to talk about his his uh, his uh, oh yeah, his, uh, yeah, yeah. His indie RPG. Um, and and uh, but he, and it was it was so f- that that whole discourse. So for those who don't know, there was this indie RPG developer. What, what game was it? I forget. It was um, for it was for it was for a game that just launched on Ga- Spirit T. I think was the name of it. Spirit T, yeah, yeah. Spirit T, yeah. So he was talking about how you know engagement was great at Spirit T, but it was getting no YouTube coverage. Uh, and he was wondering about that. And he he said part of that is because you know a lot of the YouTubers we reached out to asked for money. And I just thought that that was gross. And then, so it was funny to see him getting ratioed by content creators saying, "What the fuck? Why are you? What, why are you? Why are you calling us gross?" And the other journalists in the ma- media space saying, "You know, it's too bad. You know that that it's like this. You know, or uh, it's weird that 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 selling out is is um, is uh, mainstream now." And that uh, kind of goes back to what I said earlier in the podcast in the show today tonight. That I do believe influencers have already eaten the the, the media's mm. lunch. I I think that's already happened, you know. And it's funny. It was funny to see journalists say, "Oh, I can't believe this is happening." And it's like, no, to me, it happened already, guys. Like, 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 like you're you're just catching up on the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the ecosystem has is already favoring and favoring influencers over, over journalists, you know. Uh, and that's why I am here with with at podcasts, you know. That's why I'm, <laughs> that's why I reach out to podcasts. That's why I'm part of uh, Collins Unit. That's why I appear uh, often on podcasts like. Castle Super Beast, which is my favorite uh, gaming podcast. Shout out to them. Um, because I recognize, and that's why I, I get along very well with a lot of uh, creators in the, in the YouTube and Twitch space. And part of that is one, because I think they're great people and it's and I'm also fans of them. But two, I think it's very useful for me as a, as a journalist at a fucking newspaper to kind of, you know, let myself get known within these communities, you know. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm so well known is because I've embedded myself in these communities, you know. Yeah, and you know it's one of the reasons. It's one of the reasons people love you because you're you're 
you don't look, look you look don't, you don't look down your nose. Don't look down you know? on them at all. I, I it, yeah. In fact, I look at them as peers or colleagues, or I I look up to them. You know, that's that's pretty much what it is. And I know that that sounds that must sound weird coming from a Washington Post journalist from the prestigious Washington Post. But what I don't think I don't you know I'm just a guy you know and I uh, that that works there. So I I do often forget like my own power and privilege as someone at the Washington Post. That happens a lot in journalism conventions when I just show up. And then, you know, I, I, I suddenly remember that I'm at the Washington Post when people come up to me and start wanting to talk to me and ask me for advice or just want to be around me or even ask for selfies. <laughs> um, and th th it took me a, a few years to kind of realize, like, when I was at a convention, at the journalism convention, because I used to go to the network all the time, right? And that's how I make connections and everything like that. Um, again, it's all about being in a clique, uh, whether you're in a creator space, the game space, or even in, in the mainstream media space. But eventually it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to be at a convention anymore. I don't want to network with people. And my friend was like, Gene, you're getting it wrong. You're not here to network with anybody. People here are here to network with you. And I was like, oh, Ooh. that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. like, and then that's when you finally that realize, sucks. like, yeah, I am that. I am him. <laughs> I mean, I'm him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I became I am him, him. You know? So, But yeah, I realized that it does sound funny for someone that, like – Especially in, in you know people who are only used to the mainstream journalist space to kind of I feel like I feel like some of the mainstream journalists they they look down on YouTubers and stuff and I don't know I mean I, I understand totally, totally. They and do. it's like they do. the whole like oh paying for coverage right oh we would never do it but it's like you're paying for marketing like that's mm -hmm. it's it's marketing like I don't mm -hmm. think anybody would pay for a review but you pay for coverage in the same way that IGN yes. pays for ads IGN on their thing it's whatever. the same exactly, thing exactly. the same yeah. thing but they looked I don't know I don't know what it is like I like, I don't know maybe it's because we have you know I, I don't know if it's ever really happened to me but I'm sure some people look at an Xbox 2 and they see and I hate using this word because I don't like to think like chat GPT said this to, mm -hmm. uh, about our podcast that a pop our, our popular podcast chat GPT says we have a popular podcast um mm. <laughs> uh, which I was found to be funny, and you know, I, I think we probably have one of the biggest Xbox-related podcasts around, you do. Uh, you if do. not the biggest. Um, and it's just, it's just, I don't know. Like, I, I sort of feel like sometimes uh, people, like on the journalist side, like IGN, and whether they look at that, that, and they're like, Ugh, I don't like those guys. I don't like Jazz. Mm -hmm. I don't like Rand. What do they do? Mm -hmm. They didn't go to school to learn about journalism and all that sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like times are changing, man. I don't know what to tell you. You know, the times are changing, but also as someone who's worked with journalists for over twenty years, uh, mainstream and games journalists, I think that a common trait in journalists, for some reason, is that they have a very, very tunnel vision of what hard work means. Um, I think a lot of them look down on influencers because, and they don't think that it's worth paying for that kind of coverage or marketing because they feel like that it doesn't take a lot of effort. And as someone who has tried to stream before or, or and who has tried to be an influencer before, um, even on the local side, I, I was a local influencer in Hawaii. Uh, that one year that I took off at, at, uh, to do PR, I was I, I was getting like hotel rooms and like you know free meals and everything like that just to post on my Instagram and stuff like that. But that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of the planning and work and 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 it's it, a content schedule and uh, figuring out your messaging and also the the whole point of acting and and being a personality is tough. A lot of people look down on that, and it reminds me again of of you know that discourse about the gta 6 trailer being leaked you know mm -hmm. and a lot of journalists uh were saying well i don't care about you know, you know why are any why is anyone caring about a, a trailer an advertisement being leaked it's just marketing for for a corporate company isn't it right and yes one it is true that that it is just marketing but two you don't understand the amount of work that it takes to be able to plan that they that the, the rock internally for a rock star to plan okay december 8 is is, is a date you don't understand the, the amount of, uh, of work that it took to even make a trailer i know people who, who who edit trailers it takes a ton of work they also make a lot of money for it but they feel very passionate and feel feel very proud of it so for some reason, journalists across whatever industry, whether it's mainstream or games or whatever, they always feel like that they're the hardest working fucking people in the, in the information economy when that's just not true. Uh, I've been on the PR side before. And it's funny because I've, I've seen IGN journalists or other games journalists who, who 
didn't think that, and then they ended up on the PR site, and they're like, "Oh, it really is a lot of hard work. I, I appreciate this now." And it's like, "Yes, exactly. Like you don't understand unless you fucking do the work." So when I did PR, I was uh, I, I also thought, "Oh, PR is just like I just have women feeding me grapes. I'm just getting <laughs> getting jerked off wherever, you know." That's not true. I'm not driving fast cars like that. I'm working my ass off. I was probably working harder than I even was as a journalist, you know, when I was working at a PR agency. So I do, I just think that j- journalists need to just kind of break out of their 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 thinking, and it's like guys, you you're you're probably not even the hardest working people within your company, let alone like in the industry. So just give it a break and just, just try to understand other how other people do their work, you know. Like yeah. I I sort of I have like this jaded opinion about games journalists and journalists in general because when I when I first came into this, the gatekeeping was palpable. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I had like these arguments. Like people were coming and attacking me. Like you were journalists and stuff, for like random reasons. And then I spoke mm. to them in DM, and it was like they were suddenly they were nice again. But they were so defensive and ready to attack over t- the slightest of misunderstanding. And I think mm. that part part of that is this sort of tunnel vision, where it's like you sort of you have to disconnect yourself from like uh seeing pr people as human beings or Mm -hmm. or like um thinking about like like i've leaked stuff and i've i've it's kept me up at night with the guilt you know and Mm -hmm. i've spoke to journalists about like how do you deal with this and they're just like what's the job man you know you just cut and i find that really really hard so i completely feel you on the tunnel vision comment Mm, yeah the gatekeeping part is interesting because that also happens in like the elite media space. Again, I went to Washington Post, New York Times, like I have friends at CNN, uh, and I recognize it immediately that there is an absolute click mentality even in the in the elite media space. And so I try to, to try to try to capitalize on that immediately, you know. Uh, I would try to befriend like, you know, the most popular columnist or whatever, you know. Uh, part of my tactics as a, a DC journalist was I wanted to make sure that people see me hanging out with other prominent journalists. Uh, uh, even when uh, there was a really uh, well-respected columnist at the Washington Post that we that we had hired at the time, and she was like a total star. And I introduced myself and I asked her out for dinner and blah blah blah. And I and I specifically chose the restaurant outside of our office. So when everybody walks out of our office, everybody will see us having dinner, you know, <laughs> because I want people to know that I that I am becoming I am I am in the gates already, you know. So that, I can't do I, I can't I, do that stuff, man. That's like playing the game. Yeah, it's like, hard. It's I've hard. I've seen I've seen other journalists do that kind of stuff, and like mm-hmm. um, I remember I, there was this there was this one prominent journalist who I bumped into outside of Gamescom once. And there was this huge queue to get to get into the security area for the press, right? Huge, massive queue. And, like, I'm just there queuing, you know, like like anyone else. And th- mm-hmm. this chap was just like, oh, hi, you're Jez, right? And he was like, yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, yeah, cool, cool, nice to meet you. Like, I was kind of a little bit starstruck. And he was just like, come with me. And he kind of grabbed my hand. And we just sort of, we he went to, like, the front of the queue, the security mm-hmm. queue. And he was just like, oh, yeah, we've got a meeting. And just sort of lied his way past security and i was just yeah, like yeah. i was sitting there thinking oh my god we're gonna get in trouble <laughs> somehow <laughs> you know but it's it's that kind of you know that's suppose, really cute that's yeah it's, it's that kind of mentality right um yeah but it, it separates is, it, the it, it, from the chaff the people who can do that kind it of is stuff. a very different mentality and that's why a lot of people think that i'm not an that, that i'm an extrovert when i'm actually really an introvert the all, all, only reason why is all, I do it is because one, I've I've drank a lot of alcohol and done a lot of drugs to be able to, <laughs> to get myself to, into that state of mind to be aggressive and, and push my way to, like to lines and everything. Um, and uh, two, I just feel like I, I, I just need to do it, you know. Uh, so that's why I show up at like, that's why I'm at the White House Correspondents Dinner, you know. <laughs> I hate I hate the White House Correspondents Dinner. It is the worst event in in human history. It is it is a, it is a gathering of the worst people. I every night I've I've been there, <laughs> it's always one of the worst nights of my life, but I always go because I'm I because people see me there. That's it's it. Cra- so. It's crazy. And then crazy people are like, "Wow, how did Gene get in there?" I'm like, "You know, I want you to wonder because that's part of the game, you know." Part of the game. It's the game. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, there's one. I think there's one last question I wanted to ask, uh, Gene. Um, how do you? Uh, what do What do you think about Epic's win over Google? What do you, yeah, what do you think I, that'll I end, end up amounting to? 
It just happened yesterday. Um, but uh, I guess my first initial reaction, I, I, I don't, I haven't read deeply into the case or the decision. So, um, you know, if I misstate something or misrepresent something, please forgive me. But, you know, I guess my initial reaction was, wow, Sweeney is vindicated. You know, all that mm -hmm. money that he spent and uh, all the people that he laid off, <laughs> all, all that human sacrifice uh, for a victory, you know, so... At at the very least, like that happened, you know, it's kind of like how I look. I look at Red Dead Two and all the crunch that happened for Red Dead Two. I was like, yes, there was a lot of human sacrifice of blood and tears that went into the work, but look at the fucking game that you guys made. That holy shit, you know. <laughs> so it's the same with this epic win. I'm I'm just like, wow. I you know, like I guess the resources ended up paying off, and and his instincts were correct. That uh, yeah, I mean, they lost to Apple. Mm -hmm. But now they they beat Google, so I don't know what that means. Like Jazz, I mean, well, it's it's interesting, right? Because the Apple trial never went to a jury, whereas the Google trial did. So mm -hmm. there's, there's there's some different elements here, and like like Jean said, I haven't I haven't read the full the the full analysis of it yet, and there'll be people probably um, our old pal Florian might be commenting it on on Twitter or something or X or whatever it's called now, but like. It is intriguing how Google, how the the judge and, and and the jury interpreted the case is different. When like you could say in America, Apple has more of a no monopoly than Google, right? Um, but I do I do think like Microsoft. I know from speaking to Microsoft that they are predicting that the walls in America will come down for Google and Apple, and one of the one of the reasons for them buying Activision was to take advantage of the 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 death of the walled garden the the windowsification of mobile you know because windows mm. is an open platform because it's a monopoly and now you've got google google and apple have like effective control over the mobile e computing ecosystem but it's not open like windows and they so, mm. they sort of epic and microsoft sort of partner up in this sort of secret alliance to try and crack that open so uh, this it's the, it's yeah, the yeah. first it's the first pillar i think i think we'll see more of it yeah i mean stuff like that is uh again part of sweeney's vision in the metaverse that we're breaking down these barriers that there are more op open sources and all of these lines of communication and platforms can easily speak to each other and that's what the metaverse is i think a lot of people really really missed that whole point of that you know the whole point is you know we have a standardized version of, of emails so and so at so and so dot com or so and so at so and so dot whatever right um, and if you try to that is the ultimate ideal of what a metaverse could be that we have a standardized way of representing ourselves and that it can that, that it can be persistent throughout wherever uh, we go to, uh, regardless of the platform or the the, the 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 private space that we might be in, you know. Avatar. So, ideal, yeah, avatar, our avatar or whatever. So, you know, my Fortnite skin or my Roblox skin would be would persist in <laughs> one or the other, you know, or it would would be in Sea of Thieves or something like that, you know. That'd be really intriguing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think that's a good point to wrap it up. Well, actually, you know what? I just thought I just thought of another question. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gene. I know, no, you know no, we're, no, we're just... low two hours. Um, I wanted to ask yeah, about two hours. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even notice. Don't worry about it. Um, I wanted to ask about Tim Stewart's comments. All right. About yeah. Yeah, about like Xbox and oh, yeah. you know he said they wanted to bring their first party stuff to more screens. Um, and then Phil did an interview with Jez, which was great. Jez was so excited uh, <laughs> about how Game Pass isn't going anywhere. Uh, but then, like, As Dust Falls came to PS5, and then the whole Blade discussion with no logos. Um, what, do, what do you think? Do you, do you think we see a future? I know there's this push from certain people for Xbox to become a third-party publisher with a console to mm. essentially have the console but release all your games on Nintendo and PlayStation. There's this kind of drive... From even though people that say Xbox is irrelevant and their games suck, but they want all their games, and one day Xbox is awful and is going to leave the industry, but the next day they're monopoly. You know, I can never keep the agendas straight when you know people are talking about this stuff. Um, I guess what do you what do you what did you what did you take away from Tim's comments and then Phil's comments? Is it is that Xbox going third party and putting their games everywhere? 
like on PlayStation, is that a future that you could potentially see happening? I mean, who knows 10 years from now, but I mean, what'd you yeah. take away from all that? I mean, I guess my takeaway from the comments, I was a little su surprised at how much uh, Stewart's uh, comments uh, took traction and how it was interpreted as Xbox is going third party. Uh, I didn't take that at all. I, I felt like a lot of what he said was very consistent with what Phil has been saying uh, for years. I, f I feel like the messaging was pretty cons cons consistent, you know, uh, that they want to put it on Samsung TVs and they want to put it on Sony TVs. And maybe they'll be on PlayStation and Switch someday, but you know, right not right now. Um, that's how I interpreted it as. So I didn't. I felt like it was much do about nothing, and it was good that just like clarified that because uh, I feel like I, I feel like it was getting out of control, and it probably needed that, that messaging probably needed to be bottled up. But I don't know why it got out of control in the first place. Um, I'm not sure how people thought that that was such a. I didn't think it was that significant of a comment. Um, that yeah, neither did that, I. I guess, it was just like yeah. the same thing they've been saying for a while, right? And that's exactly what that that that. Is. Okay, I'm good. I, I, I was wondering if if that was like correct because from my impression was that it was there was no news at all that he was just kind of saying the same platitudes that people. Yeah, like, but then you know I think there was a quote in there where it was like, "Oh, this is the new strategy or something," but we're not announcing anything broad like broadly. Mm -hmm. So people people felt that. Oh, so this is something new. You are trying to bring your first... But it was like a question about ABK and how it fits into their game portfolio. And ABK ABK is now first party. Yeah. Right? And it was like, okay. It was also, you know, a discussion to investors. Right? So Fargo, it's not yeah. like... Yeah. So it's not like gamers or whatever. And it's... I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's this weird thing where you see it online and people talking about it. And they want Xbox to go third party. But then they don't want to buy the console or play their games. They just want to be... A... I've always said, I feel like with Nintendo, when you buy a Nintendo product, you know that you're not getting AAA games, right? Mm -hmm. Unless the Switch 2 changes that. You buy an Xbox product, you know that you're not going to get Japanese content, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's just kind of the way it is. Mm -hmm. when, with PlayStation, you get everything. And I've always felt like some of these PlayStation players feel like they're entitled to literally every game that ever releases. Mm hmm and now that Xbox is actually trying to, for lack of a better word, compete, I don't know, you know, compete by buying a couple of publishers, keeping things exclusive. That they're now, they're now feeling what what Nintendo fans and what Xbox fans have been kind of feeling sometimes when they watch it and be like, "Damn, I can't, I, I don't have to play it here. I'm gonna have to play it there." And now it's like yeah. all these games, Xbox, like, no, you have to play it here or you can play it on your PC. And now they don't like that. They're like, "No, I want to play it here." Like I saw some Blade reactions that were like, "Oh man." Uh, this is a rip Xbox, and they're like, no, you know, Arcane's a Xbox student. And you're like, wait, what? Or like, is this coming to PlayStation? Like, some people were asking that. It was like, mm -hmm. man, I can't wait to play this on my PlayStation. Like, and then chat would be like, you know, it's an Xbox student. And they're like, huh? Mm -hmm. You mean I have to play? You know, like some of that stuff. I, I, um, I don't know. I didn't think it was, but much to say about anything. Uh, but a lot of people did. Uh, but I, I agree I, with you. You never know because Jez and Jez has said he thinks that you know five years from now the EU could take and basically force the PlayStation Store, the Xbox Store, and Nintendo Store wide open. Yeah, you know, open up those closed ecosystems mm. and basically being like, all right, you have to allow other people's stores on your your, your platform now. For what it's worth, I, it, I doubt that it was just sort of like it was a thought experiment because of how. Mm how like I, I kind of feel the eu just sort of they grit they get something and they run with it to it's like to its most extreme conclusion sometimes and i kind of feel like yeah, that, that, that is potential thank, yeah. thank, thank, thank you so much for the USB C ports on our iphones now the, yeah the exactly so that's, that's yeah. a huge deal so that that's what that like wouldn't that be nice if uh the eu just led the way in fixing so much of our our tech industry um yeah, maybe. Cause, yeah, because because our fucking government isn't gonna do shit. You know, so mm, no. Anyways, um, I guess w last question. Um, <laughs> what is your most anticipated game for next year? What's the one you're looking forward to oh, the most out of everything fire. announced so far? Uh, this coming year, uh, I, I haven't even thought about that. Twenty four, twenty four games. I mean, I, I you it could be a you know Switch to Super Mario Odyssey two launch title, you know, because we're probably mm -hmm. gonna get one of those, right? Well, the Princess Peach game, I'm looking forward to that one. Oh, the uh, Peach game, okay. I forgot Princess about Peach that. Showtime. 
I'm a huge uh, Princess Peach fan, so that I'm excited for that. What do you think of Bowsette? Uh, I think she's hot. I, th- I think it's great. I, 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 I love I love the idea of dirty, sexy Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> dirty, sexy, horny Nintendo. Yeah, horny Nintendo, which which is you know if you if you're in this platoon community, is it oh, very God. much alive yeah. there. You know. Oh yeah, I've seen uh, some of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, what, what is coming? God, I just I just What's Google twenty four twenty four games are coming and, and I I got I barely got any games. It says fucking Star Wars Outlaws. Zelda Zone Zero, which actually does look cool, um, and Prince of Persia, I guess, which I, I'm also looking forward to. I think it looks to. cool. Yeah, yeah, that does look really cool. The Lost Crown. I mean, there's um, the Infinite Wealth game, like a dragon. Oh um, yeah, of course, dude. And also, yeah. I'm from I'm from I'm from Hawaii, so I'm hoping to do a stream with Infinite Wealth where I just talk all about like my life in Hawaii because like you know I played the the, the Infinite Wealth demo in Like a Dragon Gaiden. And oh my god, like I can literally find my fucking mom's apartment. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, like it's really like it's definitely like a, a kind of like Spider Man two in terms of you just kind of squish uh, all of Honolulu into one area, and certain parts are just kind of you know represented. But it's it's the the vibe is so accurate, you know. Um, I can't even yeah. put up this GameSpot fucking. See, article. like Persona three reloaded, um, ban- the Banishers game. Uh, Suicide Squad, Final Fantasy VII uh, Rebirth. Uh, oh, Rebirth. You know it's, it's Dragon's Dogma Two. Dragon's yeah, Dogma Dragon's 2. Dogma Two. Easily you know, most anticipated game. Dragon's Dogma Two now comes out the same day as Rise of the Ronin, but I have a feeling Rise of the Ronin is going to move. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't think that's a good date for that to launch the same day as Dragon's Dogma Two. Dragon's Dogma yeah. is going to be so big. Have you seen some of the videos that have been putting out? It looks just incredible. I hope so. I hope so. Um, have you guys played Dragon's Dogma 1? I've I did not original. play it. I have played the original, but I played it late. I played it this year. <laughs> mm. So it, ha- I think some aspects of it have not aged particularly well. But it's kind of no, like... No, a lot of it has aged very, very poorly. Um, yeah, but you can, I can feel... I yes. can feel why it's a classic. And I can feel yes. why the new <laughs> one's going to be huge. As my friend Pat said, it is the greatest 7 out of 10 game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because uh, the structure is terrible, the story is terrible, the open world is very, very empty. But the things that it does well, it does better than any other game in existence. In terms of fighting monsters, in terms of having a cool action combat role play, role play system. Um, the magic it's amazing. System is so the magic well system. Done. The magic system. It is still the best representat- representation of magic in a video game, even more than like Forspoken, which is a game all about fucking magic. Um, so yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, it, it, fe- it feels like a redo of Dragon's Dogma 1 because Dragon Dog- Dra- Dragon's Dogma 1 was still rushed out the gate. If you played Dark Arisen, the DLC, uh, have you played, did you play that, that, uh, that, uh, those, that piece of content? I, Dark I have not. I, I, I own it, I bought it, but I haven't tried it. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Uh, the, the, the monsters and dungeons are so good. The weapons that you get there are amazing, and they're so strong. Like I maximize. Like I, I min max like crazy for Dragon's Dogma One. Like to the point where the ultra boss, I was able, I was literally able to melt the ultra boss within like two minutes. Man, I felt so proud to be able to just kill a, kill a boss just by myself in two minutes. It's such a fun game. So you definitely, know. that is my most uh, anticipated game for now. Um, um, Jez is gonna hate me for asking you this, but I have to because I just remembered it. Um, there's one <laughs> interaction. On, there's this interaction just, on Twitter just... we had, and I was just, and it just oh, made man. me realize like how much cooler you are to me uh, than any, any any other journalist because you read Wheel of Time. Oh yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Way back in the day, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and I, I, I wanted. I don't remember anything from it, so don't. I mean, don't I know, but it. I'm just like, dude. Gene Park read Wheel of Fucking Time. Like, how yeah. cool is he? Like. You know, you don't come across many like you know people. I mean, I, I'll get messages being like, "Oh, you know, Dragon Reborn or whatever," uh, but I don't really get to talk to people who've read it. And and I know you say you don't, you know, you don't remember anything of it. But I don't remember um, anything from it. But yeah, so I, you. I take it you were pretty young when you read it. Then, like I was, I was when I, very, I, I think very I young. was fifteen I, when I started it. Sixteen. Yeah, I was even younger then, and this is like a longer time ago. So yeah. <laughs> Um, or or maybe yeah. the book's just I, not I that memorable. Remembers, I, I have distinct memories of reading it in like like a used bookstore and then buying it later and bringing it home, and I loved it. But I don't remember it. Like I, I don't. I barely remember books that I read at the time. I, I couldn't oh. tell you what, what Catcher in the Rye was about, even though you know it's such a formative book of mine. But you know that's about it. 
That's okay. It's okay. I just wanted to bring that up. Wheel of Time, Jez, bringing people together Ugh. since 1992 Ugh. or whatever year it came out. Mm-hmm. Books, greatest thing ever. Yeah, they invented movies to replace books, dudes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, but anyways, <laughs> replace book for me. That's pretty much what it is, you know. I've actually gotten back into books, Gene. I hadn't. I didn't read. And I I got rid of my collection in 2005, and I didn't read another book until 2021. And mm. I've gotten really back into reading again: fantasy, science fiction, thrillers. Mm. All that sort of stuff. So, like, I beat 50 games this year. And when I say beat, I mean beat, like, roll credits. Not like Jez, where he just plays games or whatever and doesn't beat <laughs> them, right? Uh, you know, I gave Jez the whole year to beat Persona 5, and he said he would. And guess what? He didn't. Shocker, right? Well, some of us um, have to work for a living, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. You're going to use that excuse. I bet you if you put up your stats on Xbox, I bet you you have more hours played on Xbox than I did. Maybe. I 100% <laughs> bet you you have more hours than I do. Um, uh, but I also, I, I, I kind of, I love reading. I've gotten really back into it. Like some of the sto- some of the new stuff that's out there, uh, some of the stuff that like takes the, the subverts the tropes of like uh, typical fantasy or science fiction. St- it's so good. There's so many cool stories out there. I love it. I like play my games, do my content, read some books and it's, I love it, you know, but um anyways i just wanted to thank you for uh coming on the show uh appreciate you giving us uh you know two hours plus of your of your time i I thought it was a great conversation and and as always you know let the people know i'm sure everybody knows who you are where they can find you but let everybody know who doesn't uh where they can uh where they can find you at yeah you know what i'm trying to get to ten thousand followers on instagram so follow me on instagram guys instagram uh, there you go gene park you know i mean maybe i'll start using the platform more uh but i'm gene park on instagram <laughs> <laughs> i'm gene park on twitter uh G- gene park on on reddit um and uh gene park at the washington post so mm. uh, you can even follow me there if you're a subscriber um, mm. but that's a whole other issue um we're all gonna uh, need another place to go to once twitter eventually implodes yeah, right. I, I wish it, 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 it's, it's taking forever to die. It's taking forever to die. It's crazy. Eventually, the banks will come for their money back, and Musk will be like, "Oh, we don't have a business. Sorry." They got, they got to, they got to. This business is ridiculous. Yeah, it's so. crazy, crazy. But yeah, thanks so much for joining us, Gene. And um, it's so awesome to sit down and get to speak to you. We'll have to do this yeah, again yeah. sometime. I'm, 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 Maybe yeah, stream Monster Hunter. Yeah, I'm happily I finally made it to the Xbox Two, an excellent name mm. for an Xbox podcast. So. That was that was a listener listener name of that too when we just started. Which I think we're we're about to hit episode 300 next mm. month. Wow, we're getting there, and we still can't we still can't get Phil Spencer on him, unfortunately. <laughs> Put in a good yeah, word yeah. for us in the click. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're the one who has a has a direct line to fill too. You know, <laughs> uh, probably more true, than me. True. Um, mm. I, you know, Phil doesn't follow me on, on Twitter, so there's that. What? That's a, that's I mean, that's, that can't be true. He doesn't. He doesn't. I, it's it's crazy because we get along very well. Like I, I don't think there's. Uh, he actually unfollowed me, so I must have been Uh-oh. bugging him about something. So uh, but we, we, there's edgy. no drama. Like, uh, the behind the scenes, Phil and I t- t- talk for, t- talk very well to each other. So a Twitter follow. That, that that's why I'm just saying the, tw- the, the, the uh, Twitter follow doesn't mean, mean anything. You know. I think you might have done that by accident, um, but or maybe it was because you said mean things about Deathloop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Probably. could be. <laughs> Probably when I unsubscribed to Game Pass, which I actually did unsubscribe to Game Pass. Oh, yes, uh, I, I just you unsubscribed because I saw IGN's article. I used their guide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, actually, you. I did actually did unsubscribe because I I just don't need it right now. You know, uh, what, mm. what, what what was I going to do? Play for fucking Starfield? I'm going to no. I'm going to buy Starfield. Shut up. So yeah, yeah. They I mean they 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 did add a whole bunch of Embracer games this month. I wonder I wonder why a bunch of Embracer games suddenly showed up. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, mm. but anyways i think we're wrapping it up there thanks so much gene and yeah, uh, thanks everyone out here for listening too and thank um, you two gentlemen it's awesome it's awesome so rand do you want to send us off yeah so uh thank you guys for uh you know checking out xbox two plus one it'll be up uh for everybody uh next week and we'll be back on friday with another xbox two regular episode and yeah, looking looking forward to that. I don't know what we're going to talk about because there ain't much going on, but we'll make it work. 
And so until then, uh, have a good rest of the week. Later. Rock and roll, baby. Thanks, everybody.